Hi folks, welcome to The Weekender, your weekly stop-off point for all your gaming news. We have a jam-packed show with talk about 40k, Age of Sigmar, Lord of the Rings, and we've even got two big interviews for Shadowborn's Oathsworn Kickstarter, and also Mythic Games are coming back to Kickstarter for a 1.5 version of Joan of Arc. The guys are also giving away this fantastic copy of Siege, so if you want a chance to win this, Come over to ontabletop.com, comment below, and we'll speak to you after the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the Weekender. Yes, another weekend of conversation about gaming. <gasps> what better way to start your Weekender? I'm, of course, Lloyd, and I'm joined by Mr. Justin. Morning. Ben and Jerry as well. I've got Hello. Ben on the screen, I've got Jerry over there. Sorry, I'm looking forward to your knowledge on World War Two. That's, that's no doubt that'll good. be on full show. Oh yeah, always. We've got a bumper show, but mm -hmm. before we get stuck into the bumper show, it, this Monday we're rolling over into phase two of the Infinity Campaign. So if you've been doing battles and stuff like that, and you haven't re yet reported them, get stuck into the system. Am I right, Justin? Well, if 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 you don't get your reports in before those uh, theaters lock out, mm, sorry, that didn't yeah. happen. If you want to make an, a, a your stamp on the Infinity World. You know, as a collective, mm -hmm. get involved in the campaign. Like we're in phase one at the minute. Yep. The map will change a little bit. Yep. Some points will close on Monday. Mm -hmm. So the asteroid blue is changing to the asteroid red. Well, I guess. Physics <laughs> <laughs> yeah. joke. I'm not sure. You in the audience. Oh. Huh? I'm not sure when on Monday, but I do know that phase two kicks off on Monday. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you have been sitting on reports, what do you do with them, Justin? Get them into the system before it locks out, and uh, well, this is one of those campaigns where you're going to be affecting the narrative, ca the narrative behind the actual game. So yeah. definitely want to get in on. That's cool. Right before we get stuck into the news, we've got two big features coming up in this show. Mm. We've got Shadowborn Games in for Oh Sworn. Oh, that's cool. And we've got Mythic Games in for Joan of Arc One Point Five. Oh man, that'll be sweet. Looking forward to it. Right, Ben, what's up first in the news, mate? First off, we've got a little bit of a public service announcement at PSA. Uh, it was brought to our attention in the forums that uh, Prodos have sent out, an, or Arkham Prodos, have sent out an email recently, which is giving people uh, a very uh, window for you to get hold of all the stuff that you maybe didn't get already through the AVP Kickstarter. So there's going to be, there was two weeks, probably now around one week for you to send in emails. So make sure you email customer service at prodosgames.com if you're missing anything from the Kickstarter or a few separate things. Uh, that will never get produced, unfortunately. Uh, but make sure you, you email them, you tell them what you're missing, and hopefully they'll be able to get them out to you uh, before it all goes away because uh, they, you know, the license has ended, all that kind of thing as well. So if you're if you're interested in trying to get a hold of some more stuff for this that you haven't got from Kickstarter, make sure to get involved and, and send your email off, and make sure you let them know what you're missing. So cool. Good community cool. announcement. Mm. Yeah. Well worth putting your eyeballs on that if you're still waiting on stuff. Uh, yeah, so next up, we're moving into the world of the Mortal Realms and Age of Sigmar, and we've got some new news coming out this week about what's coming for this. And pre-orders today, Saturday, today, right now, over on store.ontabletop.com and also, of course, on Games Workshop and all that kind of thing as well. But yes, so we've got the Free Cities Battle Tome is leading the way. Uh, so this is going to be a new Battle Tome which sort of brings together a whole bunch of new rules, faction-specific stuff, special rules, magical items, all that kind of thing. But playing as all those distant factions from Warhammer 8th edition that sort of went awry and disappeared into the nether, they've now been brought back into the fold properly with a proper Battle Tome for you to use alongside the rest of your order forces if you don't want to play Space Lizards or uh, space marines in uh, fantasy worlds um, so yeah as well as the battle time itself there's also going to be two start collecting sets as well so there's one for anvil guard and one for the grey water fastness so if you want to do some very city specific uh, armies they've got some ways for you to get started in there so you've got some duard in there from the dispossessed and you've also got some elves some dark elves there as well doing their best to be corsairs in the multiple realms, which is very cool. On top of that as well, there's also a new battle tone for the Oroch Warclans, which we talked about a little bit in the past on previous weekenders. And this is a battle tone which brings together both the Savage Orcs and the Orochs themselves into one massive war. And you can either field them as separate armies or you can do them as one big war and use a massive uh, buff to that effectively, which gives you a whole bunch of new special rules and all kind of things like that. 
which is very, very cool indeed. Uh, beyond that as well, but just Age of Sigma in general, there's also a new gaming rulebook, which has been designed for those people that play a lot of match play games and they don't want to carry around a massive rulebook or obviously just that one thin bit of rules that you normally get in the start sets and that kind of thing. They've put together a very succinct book which brings together loads of scenarios and special rules that you need in order to play match games. So if you want to get your hands on that, that is also going to be available as part of their web store offerings for this week. Cool. Nice. Interesting. I like the idea of the big war book. <laughs> for, for, for me, I'm. You I'm, think they should have kept them separate? Yeah, because they tend to explode. Mm. You get too many orcs in one place. And <laughs> start, start having strange dreams. You need copper yeah. staffs to uh, <laughs> earth them. Like that. Uh, for for me, I'm excited for the the grey water fastness. Get some classic dwarves out there on the tabletop. Mm-hmm. It's one of the cool things actually about this book, the Free Cities one, is that they've done it as, as I say, very city specific. So if you want to play a city that is all themed around the idea of that kind of the Grey Water fastness, massive cannons and artillery and that kind of thing, then you've got that option there. And they've done special rules for all the different factions, so it all sort of works together really nicely. And they also blend in really well with a lot of the Stormcast stuff that already is out there. So if you want to have a little bit of a mix and match. You've got some good options, but it's kind of a way for you to have those traditional sort of free guild style empire soldiers from 8th edition brought back into the fall with a lot of the things like the battle mages and that kind of thing. You've also got the Duardin to the dwarves and you've got lots of the elves that got sort of left out as well. So all yeah. those ones that used to be part of the wood elves, they're now included in that set as well. And we can get empire steam tanks on the tabletop again. You can bring steam tank back to the tabletop. Yeah. They've got two so, of the eight steam tanks that exist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say it's the it's the anvil guard box that looks good to me yeah, it really of course Aaron. getting your eye on there yeah I've yeah it's looking bigger cool. pictures of the the big beastie or is that it? it's a hydra uh, a hydra that's yeah as big as we've got at the minute lloyd because i like i would like to get a, a gander at that that's what's drawing my eye to that box that i'm not going to be mm. looking at going Ooh, what, you don't like gyrocopters nice it's it has head options as well. Oh, very nice. nice. In one case, one of the head options is a severed bloody neck where yeah. somebody's cut a head off, oh, nice. which is just a way to annoy Hydras because yeah. they'll just get <laughs> back. Oh. Exactly, yeah. I'd be sitting there going, Willow. <laughs> Couldn't help it, would be doing that. Mad Monaghan, yeah. you really are great. Oh, we've got some sheep in here to chase around too. Do you have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, just moving on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on. What's okay. next, Ben? Uh, so next up, we got some news from the world of uh, 40k. So there's 40K. three different things for us to draw into here. So the first one of these is for more stuff for Phoenix Rising, which is the campaign that's going to be coming out for 140,000. And this is that we got to see another teaser for a new plastic model that's coming for the uh, 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 blah. The Eldar, the Eldari, or the Eldar as people used to know them. Uh, this is for. Janzar, Yanzar, however you want to say it, which is the who is the Phoenix Lord with the Howling Banshees. So we see that obviously they're getting a plastic kit, and obviously we're now getting a look at the new plastic model for one of the Phoenix Lords, which I hope, fingers crossed, means we're going to see a whole bunch of the other Aspect Excellent, Warriors yeah. getting yeah. plastics as well, because that would be damn awesome, especially for the Death Reapers. Death, Death Reapers? Yeah. This is pretty cool. Dark, Dark Reapers. Because we, we looked at some Eldar stuff. Or no, Eldari stuff a few weeks ago. Yeah. And Eldar's fine. And I literally said, come on, where are the Phoenix Lords? Yeah. They're 30 year old sculpts now. Yeah. There's the first of them. Yeah, yeah. bring that back so up. So it's because, nice to hear that GW uh, listening I was just to me. Having a, a quick look through to see if there were any other images in the nah, post. There are not. La- last time we were talking about it, we were looking at it going, well, it, yes, it's clearly Eldar slash Eldari. Hmm. Yeah. It doesn't look that different. But this is looking, this is looking sweet. Yeah, I'm liking the pose they've done on this. I mean, like it's connecting yeah. to the base via the hair, which I find quite interesting. That is pretty cool, actually. Now that you mention it, that's a good way of getting height into that. Well, it's yeah. height and motion. Mm. The other cool thing that came out of it as well is that they also said that next week, so Monday Monday morning, so probably Monday afternoon, we're going to hear about the opposite side to this. So we're going to be looking at the Drakari or the, the Dark Eldar and uh, their Incubi Master. I was going to say Drazar, Master of the Blades, has got to be because he mm-hmm. is yeah. as old as creation as well. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we're going to be seeing him coming up and being a little bit of a matchup against Yadzar there. So which will also hopefully blend together into a nice start set for the Eldari, which has been teased in the artwork and stuff we've seen. It'll be interesting so. to see when they do Drazar how much like a scorpion he will look. Oh yes, because he yeah. was the original scorpion yeah. phoenix lord before he went. You know what? Actually, they're right. We should just be killing <laughs> all the humans. Yeah. Somebody else can take over. 
and sucking their souls, mm. as it were. Yeah. Uh, this moves us on, interestingly, to uh, another little bit of a sort of gaming aid, I suppose you'd say, for uh, those guys that want to play War of 40,000. And that is that, um, as well as Age of Sigmar getting its little gaming book, uh, uh, War of 40K is also getting its gaming book as well. So it contains all the stuff you need for playing those match play games as well, but in the grim, dark, far future, rather than the mortal realms and all that shiny fantasy gloriness. Uh, so, yeah, so that's another option there. And this then leads us on to the final bit of news for 40K that came out towards the end of the week. And and that is that we got to see a proper look at the Bandai action figure. So this is the Primaris Intercessor, uh, and it looks, I'd say, pretty cool. I, I definitely have one of these sitting on top of my PC if I was so inclined to collect stuff for 40K. Looks very cool to me. Uh, nice sort of color scheme they've gone for there with that sort of ultramarine blue they've gone for the, the poster boys effectively that you can see. To give you some stats about it, it's eight inches tall, and it is collectible grade posable. Ooh, don't know what that means, but it sounds very cool indeed. And it has over 50 points of articulation. So you can make your space marine do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> I can see I can see how your day mind's working. Yes. But yeah, there's some cool stuff going on for that. And hopefully, if this sells well, we'll see them expanding it to look into other factions and stuff in 40k in the future. That'd be pretty cool. You do know you're just gonna have like the the internet's just gonna be played with like Saturday night. Oh no, no, no! Trust me. So, uh, there's going to be a gaming store somewhere where they're just going to open them all up and do the the Space Marine conga line. Yeah, just around all the gaming tables. I have to ask: Does this come pre-painted, Ben, or is it something we're going to be painting? No, no, that's a Bandai toy. It'll be pre-painted. It comes completely, completely pre-painted. Really? Yeah, is that you get what you see on the yeah. screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's a Space Marine action man. Okay, cool. I can live with this. I yeah. may have to buy one of these. It's really well shaded. It's yeah. Assuming it does come in that exact paint job there. Yeah, well, if you look at the shading they've done around the, the chest plate here, it's really, really not nicely done. Yeah, I'd have to get stuck in and do some chipping though. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't have such a clean looking space marine. You'd have to be a bit right downstairs. Up. Just, just yeah. chuck it around. It'll bring it in and let Oshin's <laughs> dog eat it. Like it eats all his miniatures. <laughs> I'll do realistic battle damage on chipping in one go. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say you're going to see a lot of people are going to reprime these down to gray and redo them as their own chapter, do guaranteed. You know, do you know what would be really cool about this, though? Is you'll get those people out there who do the fireworks videos, the mm. slow motion yeah. stuff, setting these space marines up behind like bits of terrain and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That could and be then cool. they'll get their sparklers and fireworks in and they'll have their uh, super slow mo cameras. Yeah, they're 90 frames a second, well, 300 frames a second, whatever it is, just to capture like the bug. And then they'll scroll through and they'll be like, look at that one with their smoke machines and stuff. <laughs> yeah, Looking yeah. forward to seeing some of that because like, there's some really cool stuff like that for Star Wars. So, yeah. yeah, seen that. Yeah, so And some, seen some that. folks do them with the Marvel action figures as well. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not as good as Star Wars though, is it? <laughs> because I, like, I like Marvel. I mean, I've thought about doing it with like, we don't have a camera that goes up fast, but we'll do it with regular space marines and stuff. But yeah. now... You know, yeah. the sparks and things will be yeah. much more... You can get some really interesting poses for it, yeah. In scale with the with the miniatures and the smoke, for example. See, I wonder if we're going to see maybe a, a new product line where they're going to open it up and you can maybe get an upgrade kit for this guy to turn him into an assault marine or a devastator oh, or no, something like that. they'll just them all separately. They, they won't do upgrade kits. It's Bandai. Okay. Be how many different things can they sell you? Okay. And the answer is... All of them? All of them. Okay. Because <laughs> it's Bandai. Bandai, shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see what's next then, Ben. Oh, hold on. Bless you, Justin. What's up next then, Ben? Uh, so next up, we have some stuff for those people that die and want to dive into Middle Earth. And we've got some releases for that. So we've got a new plastic King of the Dead, who's going to be leading your Army of the Dead oh, nice. uh, in, in your Return of the King battles on Pelennor Fields and that kind of thing. And he is then supported by two Heralds as well, which are new plastic models too. Um, this sort of gives you a little bit more of an option when it comes to building your force for Middle Earth SPG. Um, so the King himself will obviously go up to field quite a few units and sort of followers and things like that. But then the Heralds will also allow you to expand on that as well. So it will mean you'll be able to actually effectively field an entire army of the dead if you oh, wanted to. Yes. <laughs> this this is also then followed on by a bunch of additional gaming aids for Middle Earth as well. So uh, they have also been designing a bunch of profile cards. So instead of you having to flick through the book in order to find all the bits and pieces you need, you can have, for example, your fellowship laid out in card form on the tabletop and just refer to those if you want to instead. I'm a big fan of those kind of things, cards in tabletop games, just so you can have a quick reference. Always good in my book, so it's good to see these come to the fore. They've got three packs uh, sort of worked out already uh, that are be coming out of launch, but they're going to be expanding to cover pretty much everything in the middle Earth Force well, line in, in, in its entirety later on down the line as well. So yeah, some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, go back, stuff. go back to the go, go back yeah, to yeah. the armies of the dead. The oh, the armies of the dead. Oh, the, miniatures, the miniatures go back to the miniatures. Yeah, oh. they are very cool. 
The PMG yes. Alonim is great. Because I've got a stack load of these guys out of the Palador Fields. Isn't that uh, Palador Fields? Palinor. Palinor. I never get that right. The Palinor box set. Here, here, I've here, got here. stack loads of them. Read that. Oh yeah? Pelinor. Pelinor. Because well, I actually have, right? I got I got the box set because I was going to do some conversions and stuff yeah. with the other like Rohan guys and stuff like that. But then I had like the armies of dead guys mm. and I was like, well, I'm not really sure what to do with them. Yeah. I'm building a skelly army and stuff, but it doesn't quite blend in size wise. And then there wasn't enough variety in what came there to field well, thinking, well, I can't really do an army. Well, I yeah. can because I have like another set of them kicking around. Mm. So I've got like two sets. Yeah, of them. They're all rocking uh, Space Marine standards. I'm not sure why that is, <laughs> yeah. but but that that is the the old Space Marine standard. The square wings with the skull in the center. All oh, right. How weird is that? Yeah, very weird. All the worlds are one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I can see people just fielding loads of armies of the dead because it's easy to paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's good, a good entry. bridge between Sigmar and 40k. Then is that what? Is that white <laughs> in the middle? Yeah, LSR was a uh, was a prime arc. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> What's up next, Ben? Anything more in, in the Lord of the Rings realms, or are we moving on? Yeah, so moving away from Games Workshop to uh, the guys at Battlefront uh, now, Battlefront Miniatures, and we've got some more stuff that came out at the end of last week for uh, those people who want Diamond of Flames War. So obviously these couple of months, so September, October, are really big for uh, the Germans and the DJ German factions. And so we've got a whole raft of new releases that came out last week for these guys, leading off with the Tiger Tank Platoon, and this led into the Fashion Jäger Stug Assaulter Platoon, and then a whole bunch of extra stuff as well. So we've got things like uh, some transport options when you want to move your uh, infantry around. We've also got um, sort of mounted mortars as well if you want to get some artillery on the move, and then some sort of more fixed artillery too. Uh, so the big sort of emphasis on this sort of set of releases was some big armor, and also some big guns to try and hold off the US and the British and the rest of the Allied forces as they push through Normandy and further into France as well. So if you're looking to expand things up, maybe if you're getting involved in Slow Grow League and that kind of thing as well, this would be a good chance for you to go and pick up some more additional stuff for your German army, which looks very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have one question. Where is my Panzer IV? I don't see any Panzer IVs in any of this. That That's makes me sad. they've already been released. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. I didn't know. That's how much Shows how much attention I'm paying. They're, they're waiting for you, Just. <laughs> Guess where I'm going? Straight to the store. They're out there already. Mm. It's good times for all. Let's, let's have a quick look at them again, because we went through them pretty quickly there. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll scroll really right nice back up the top. So you're, you're rocking from the heaviest of all. Well, I say the heaviest of all, the heaviest that they had on that front that worked, because mm. they did have bigger tanks, they just kept breaking down. So the Tigers, <laughs> which that's substantial, two of those would be 50 points ish mm. five of them is that's that's an entire force that's an entire army's worth of tank right there most games are played at 100 points yeah. that's like 124 points of wow. tanks <laughs> so that's a big game mm. right there um but if you want to do specific scenarios you really can yeah um, stugs are always fun stugs are good and you don't have to use them for fulsham jaeger you can use them for proper parts of the german wehrmacht instead <laughs> Not that I dislike the Fulsham Jaeger, but don't use them. Yeah. Uh, 251, so if you want to run any sort of mechanized troops, mm-hmm. they're great, uh, especially because they don't leave the board like soft skin vehicles do, so you can use them in armored assaults, and you can use them to get your stuff around and actually keep them alive for as long as you can, especially when you back them up with things like the uh, the gun section that comes next, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's good because you don't have to run those purely as mortar sections. You've got a... Uh, stumble there at the front so the two front half tracks have got 7.5 centimeter guns on them uh, so they're actually cannon half tracks so they're quite beefy yeah wow. they'll oh. punch they'll punch most things in the side or rear quite quite well and sort of lighter tanks they may have a fair go at the front yeah. idiots. idiots idiots are just gonna yeah you yeah. just need some of those idiots you put those in the middle of the board and then you make airborne trips assault them as a you know the Band of Brothers style yeah. assault the guns scenario. Um, yep. Yeah. Nebs for all your artillery and smoke. And then the 105s as well for artillery. So they really have ramped up mm-hmm. with the release mm-hmm. uh, to try and get as much in there as possible. Yeah. And then the last one. Uh, 12 centimeter mortar, you know. When, when an 81 isn't big enough, yeah. rock out the 12 centimeter instead and really, really make your opponent cry. 
Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, a substantial amount of stuff there. All the, the they've gone really from the um, infantry and sort of standard tanks into covering all the the sort of support options that you would yeah. ever want uh, mm -hmm. around Normandy. So, nice. Yeah. Cool. So, is that all our news, Ben? Uh, that's all the news for now. Uh, all right. Right. Moving into our front feature. Our well, first feature. Yeah, we have two for this show. Uh, two features. So Shadowborn Games, Justin. Yeah, so myself and Jerry get to, to sit down and have a, a bit of a look at what's coming in the game Oathsworn, which is either on Kickstarter right now or very, very close to launching on Kickstarter. So it's a, a dark, grim fantasy world. But uh, yeah, we'll sit down and have a word about it. Hi everybody, I'm back in the studio with Jerry and today we are joined by Jamie from Shadowborn and uh, we're going to be talking Oathsworn. Jamie, welcome to the show. Uh, hello, good to uh, be here. This is the first time we've had you live in the studio. Normally you're you're on to the interwebs on Skype talking to Sam. That's right, and this is intimidating. This is like the, the shrine of gaming here. It's incredible. <laughs> oh, come on, it's just a mildly more organized collection. Jerry, how's the attic? Oh, it's fantastic. It's grand. It's all good. <laughs> Don't worry about my attic. I'm nuclear bunker proofed. <laughs> the important thing to remember is anything you can get in your bag without a spotting is free mobiles. Whoa, 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 this is new to me. That's the only reason people come and visit us. <laughs> <laughs> there are just gaps here, there, and everywhere in those armies. Uh, all right, well, Jimmy, we're here to talk Oathsworn. So uh, this is your chance to tell everybody out there why they should like, love, and want to jump in on this game when it lands on Kickstarter. Great. Well, um, okay, so Oathsworn, Into the Deep Wood, we've been working on this for three years. We've got this team of 25 people who have just been working around the clock trying to get this thing, this like this dream into reality. Um, the game is a, um, a sort of a grand campaign game it's a story mm -hmm. what we want to do is really bring like a triple a story a new world a new ip into board gaming that mm -hmm. made you really care about the characters the places you were going to see and um and so we have we've got a new york times bestseller aaron Dembski valley's writing the story with a team oh, yeah. of seven writers we've got um uh, we've got a, a companion app that will read the story to you as you go along and the, the story isn't just like something you just read it's something you play mm -hmm. so you're playing this incredible story mm -hmm. and um traveling around the world as a free company so you're um this this band of mercenaries who goes around and they um they fight they hunt monsters mm -hmm. um for money and they were you're going to be sort of tracking these these entities um trying to work out puzzles solve mysteries unlock new envelopes and boxes and there's all these kind of hidden elements and uh and then eventually you find the monster or it finds you and you end up on the encounter board and that's where it all kinds of, then that's when the sort of the blades start flying and the teeth start smashing and there's a um you actually get into this combat with these giant glorious monster models and all of their mm -hmm. like minions and things and you're trying to take them out with your free company um so we um um, with the way that the the game works, it's kind of got these uh, these two systems. So you've got the story that comes first, and the encounter. And as you're going through the story, you are trying to work out what you're um, what you're fighting. Mm -hmm. So the um, the monster. Is not um, is not revealed to you until the end, and so at some point in the story, it might say something like, "Okay, now you open box number six, and you get your monster box out. And there's this giant mystery box, and you open the mystery box, and out comes box six, and inside is this glorious monster and all of its cars and things it does, mm. and you end up fighting the thing. And the the reason we've done that is that we really want this game to um, to feel like an experience, like it's like you're watching a, a movie, but you're watching a different movie every time. Mm -hmm. Some um, some there's some great mysteries to it. There's some great arcs and twists and stuff like that. Um, some great races and places to go and see. Um, um, and then you get like the real brutal combat where you're getting down into the yeah. dice chucking and the card drawing and, yeah. and all that kind of thing. Now, for, for me, one of the things that instantly jumps out is the way you're doing your narrative for this. You've actually built an app, which is kind of like a choose your own adventure thing. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So it's, we call it a Twisting Tales game. Mm. So it's really taking the, the the concepts of the old game book, which is what Twisting uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books or Fighting Fantasy mm. books were, um, and really bringing those into a, the the board game world, where um, it's it's for adults to be able to play. So the story's like really top notch, and mm. the, um, the 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 way that we can um, use that Choose Your Own Adventure style, that kind of game book style, is by bringing it onto the maps, and we have maps that interact. So you can track time, you can track proximity, you can have all kinds of cool modern board game mechanics that we can. Um, we can integrate with this to create this um, twisting tales concept that includes this miniature fight that you have at the um, at the end. Well, one of the the best things for this for me is just the the quality you're going to get of the storytelling. Now, th this is something that has happened to me quite a bit. Is I'll go out to a friend's place, we'll be playing a board game, I'll read my bit, they'll read their bit, and sometimes you'll have someone else who'll read a bit, but they're not so great at reading out loud. And it, it kind of breaks the immersion for me a little bit. So with the app actually reading the story to you, I find that's going to give a great experience. 
Yeah, we've been incredibly fortunate. So um, uh, we have uh, James Cosmo, um, who, if you don't know, he's um, uh, he plays Lord Commander Mormont in Game of Thrones. Uh, he's been on some incredible Hollywood movies, uh, things like Troy, um, uh, Outlaw King, Braveheart. He was in all kinds of stuff. And, um, in Pet. <laughs> that's yeah. He's uh, he's he's um, he's incredible. And so having you know you want to you want to kind of encapsulate that kind of grim dark feel. Yeah. You go for an aw- awesome kind of northern accent and get that thing. And he's he's just amazing. So um, he's he's going to be reading that to you, to get, and so you get all these characters that he that he plays, and he's he's just incredible. Just mm-hmm. spending a day in the studio with him earlier this year, seeing how he just takes a script and just just takes it up to eleven, you know, mm-hmm. um, was was wonderful. So um, and ha- so he'll be reading that app, and that just saves you having to read it for you, and you can just experience this thing. That's what we're talking about. This this idea of experiences that you're. Um, Often one of the things that kills campaign games over mm. the long period is that you can feel like the um, you've you've played one level, you've kind of played mm. them all. Like they, they, sometimes there's this experience that they're, you're kind of repeating the same process. Mm. But with this, we can have like every chapter is a dedicated story, it's mm. dedicated uh, mysteries, and those mysteries. So you're you've always got a new reason to come back. As I said with that miniature box, you're opening it up. It's mm. like Christmas. There's a new present inside every every week. You're coming out. You're opening a new box, and inside's mm. this mystery uh, mystery element. And so you're you, it, the you, it's not like you're doing one unboxing and then you've you've seen all of the yeah. that this game has to offer. It's you're opening it over a period of time and learning more and more stories, envelopes, boxes as you kind of unwrap this this world. Yeah, and for me as well, there's there's a certain amount of I can come back and replay something that I've already done. Yeah, I might know what that monster is, but with the the narrative and the story aspects there, I can go and explore. Say I didn't go to the tavern last time. Yeah, let's go there. Let's see if there's there's something useful there. Is there another path we could have went down? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, um, we actually internally what we, we we create is we create fundamentally different arcs, and so the way that you go through the chapters, you'll get to a point pretty early on in a chapter where you you split, and you're splitting in a way that means you're going to be meeting people, going to places. You can actually have the way that the um the the, the maps work is you can have multiple timelines running along the same map, so that you can go to a place and you're actually reading different entries for the same place based on which time and dimension you're kind of working mm-hmm. through. It all gets very complicated. There's yeah. a flow chart as long as my arm for each of these <laughs> chapters, and it all gets very spider web very quickly but what it means for the player is is that you can play the game again and again and not see the same things have Mm. the same experiences even with like like for instance our allies like there's people you'll meet in the world as you go through this story who will be able to join you in the longer term and they have their own arcs their own loves and fears and and desires and motivations um and um so as you go through this, you'll be able to learn more about these individual characters and how they how they work. They might open up new uh, experiences, new things, new unlocks as the game goes through. Um, but then they might die. Like mm-hmm. you might actually have a character who you unlocked who is special to your group. You brought them to fight with you on an encounter fight, and they they died in the field. And you have their story cut short right at that point. This Oof. person you cared about over this time, they've actually had you know, they're kids, man. <laughs> they can't you know. There's a whole there's a whole kind of a uh, thing there. So we really wanted to make it so we we're connected to these places, mm-hmm. the people, um, and that you're. That, that your story won't be the same as somebody else's. When you come to it, you'll be like, "Oh, I never, even saw, I never saw any of that place. I didn't even see that <laughs> that, yeah. that town or that thing." The, and the fact that uh, it is scripted, but you also have because you're not relying on a book, so you're not relying on somebody reading out and reading ahead or flicking over or saying, "I'm reading this paragraph now, but I know what's coming below me because that word is just stuck. That word has stood out." You're getting this. Uh, well, the story arc itself is playing out to you completely blank but at the same time um when we played through uh the, the sort of the first test game we were making choices and you go well we think this 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 might make sense mm. and then you get a little bonus because of it but you don't know what the bonus is whereas if you've got a, a book in front of you and you yeah, go, you'll see that chart you're, you're going to see that and you're going to go well what, what do we want yeah do we, we, need? we want we want the remo re-roll we want the pragmatism whatever. we're going to mm. Threw the child off the balcony because that's the best way to get the rules. <laughs> that, that was not an option. That was, that was not an option. It was an option where he took it immediately. No children were hurt yeah. in the making of this game. He said, he said and no fictional right. children were hurt except for whenever they maybe fought a monster. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but having this, having that extra layer, it's, it's like a, a blind. Mm. So you're presented with the choice. The choice you make as a group around the table is the choice that your group has made. And you don't know what the outcome of that is going to be. You don't know whether it's going to be 
beneficial, neutral, maybe give you some sort of negative mm-hmm. connotation for down the line on, on how these things play out. Oh, you mean well. like trying to reason with guards? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jerry. Always reason with guards. Don't what? reason you, with guards. You are, <laughs> don't reason you with guards. Are kind of Bribe them. Them. This Bribe is why them. he chucked the child off the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But yeah, yeah. That, that, deci- like that decision, like being able to make it so, it's one of those things about caring, like so you, yeah. the, the, you're because there's a way, as soon as you start seeing numbers, you're playing, you're playing, you're gamifying that moment. Yeah. But we didn't want that to be how you play this game. This game is more about the emotions of the characters. How do, what sort of free company are you? How do you deal with situations yeah. emotionally, morally? Like that's that's why we wanted people to make their decisions within that space rather than a space where numbers were involved. Because numbers tend to collapse the choices down to, what, you know, what's people best. People start you know. min-maxing. Yeah, and exactly. You're going, well, you know, I, I will give this child gold because this child will give me something. Whereas you might give this child gold and he'll run off with the gold, at which point a priest will chase them and throw them off the balcony. <laughs> Or, or you might try and negotiate with the child who says, don't worry, I swear I wouldn't rob you and give you money back that you actually already took from your pocket. You know, uh, which is why I end up off the balcony. You are so bad. <laughs> we have to have less balconies in future. Anyway, there's a priest. A priest? What? I was also a giant or sign warrior. Mostly it was the priest throwing the kids off the balcony. <laughs> So, <laughs> welcome to the office, Jimmy. Welcome to the office. Excellent. Well, I didn't think I was going to hear that many children being thrown off that many balconies. So, <laughs> so when I got here, that's why the orphanage is right beside that balcony. I'm glad we're showing. It feels like a confessional at this yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the, 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 that architect kind of just let those kids down. He shouldn't have put a balcony in the orphanage. Oh, no, without a net. Anyway. So, <laughs> yes, uh, moving along. So the, the narrative side of things is absolutely fantastic. I love the idea of being able to like blindly choose and actually having emotional, moral decisions to make. But once you've actually got through your story mode, which is a game session all of its own, you get down to the combat side of things. So if you're lucky, you'll maybe find out what your monster is beforehand, or you might get unlucky and face, oh my god, what the hell is that? Yeah, you just hear, the sh- you just see the shadow yeah. passing over you as something you just, comes up. You hear something you. shuffling and just... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So yeah, when you get into that into that stuff, we we really wanted to um uh, to do something mm. new about it. And I suppose again, part of this experience things like how do you get people to experience the emotions and the feelings of, of, of playing this sort of game? So obviously, with the story stuff, it's about these making moral choices, emotional stuff, and mm. and giving people that agency where they choose which path they go. In terms of the combat, like how do you make combat come alive? How does it feel real? And and really, we've kind of settled on this idea of, of giving people choices in every moment to, to, that are mm. meaningful to them. Like so, for instance, in our game, we don't have a system where you get told to roll X amount of dice because you have an X weapon. Mm. In this game, you choose how many dice you want to roll. So you do get a benefit for your weapons, but in this, you can swing that axe as hard as you want. And Justin swings it hard. And if you're if you're fortunate, like Justin, you you will you will Decimate. do you will yeah you can you can really do some big damage with that. But that's yeah. you that's you taking your life into your hands, swinging that thing with all your might. Or you can just go for a safe, quick tap. It's like um, in real combat. You know, you can you can choose to to, to risk that blow. I um, mean, in that, it becomes a blow that you are making not your character is making you know yeah but the the way you actually do the the mathematics of how much damage you're doing is something i quite like as well because yeah you can roll tons of dice but sometimes if something's got like you're wanting to do a lot of damage you're working off the multiples of its defense how many times something or sorry division of its defense how many times the number of hits you've done divides into its defense to determine how many points of damage you've done I think I got that right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're looking for those break points. So like, you you know, if you get, you reach yes. their defense, you'll do one HP. But if you double their defense, you'll do two yeah. HP. You and so you, like that space three. between has no value to you. But you can get up here. And so there's yeah. always, the game is always pushing you. Go on, go on, yeah. go on. You yeah. can do it. Risk and, it, and it risk it. Do it. Just double that damage. And so it's always playing on those things. Of like, you know, you can, if you push it a little harder, you can get there. But the risk, oh, if you yeah. miss, um, what happens? You've got two options for that because you can either roll the dice or you've got card decks as well, which give you the the perfect mathematical probability if you want to play it that way, if you're that kind of gamer. That's right. Yeah, the cards the cards care about you. They remember you. <laughs> they remember you missed, <laughs> and uh, they remember you've created, and so they'll give you the, the numbers over time, mm-hmm. so that you're you're playing it kind of by the numbers. You get a really nice tight fight like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the the dice don't give a damn. <laughs> no, <laughs> they, no, they don't no. care about you whatsoever. The dice guards from on high. <laughs> That's it. They will miss until the cows come home if they want to, or they will crit forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all, and um, and so you can end up with some really cool like situations there. Um, uh, and so why make people choose? Like you know, you can decide how you want to play. You know, mm-hmm. if you want to play it safe or play it by the dice or yeah. Um, you know, tr- dice are more epic and tragic, but the cards give you that kind of consistency. Mm-hmm. And so we're, we're fortunate enough with the game this big that we can actually include both of those options for people to play with and those are interchangeable at any time. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting that as well, because you have such distinct styles for the exploration, the, the fighting fantasy. It's almost like 
well, it is a um, cut-down version of an RPG. So you've got your characters and you're doing this. And the fact that you've decided to go right, you get your exploration, you do your Scooby-Doo adventure first, and then you set your Scooby-Doo trap second, and you have consistency within the, the sort of the mechanics to a certain extent. But once you've done the exploration, once you've found whatever the big bad is, you then swap to the combat mm. forward in the combat mechanics. And because you're not tying yourself to these are our mechanics from walking in the front door of whatever the city is until we've killed whatever it is we're fighting, you're not limited in that. You, you could stretch and explore and, and make something that works for both systems without feeling restrictive. Yeah, so basically it's almost like two games in one yeah. box, um, but they both play out in a, in a nice short amount of time, each one, but they um, they, they come together to make a, a, you know, a whole greater than some of its parts. Yeah. Um, and that's because we realised early on that if we try to force the story into the combat system, it's just you're, you're going to lose something yeah. in that. You get depth in one and you get depth in the other, and by separating them, you allow yourself that to, um, to, to work out. So... Um, yeah, although I do like the pacing you get with the storytelling, because how many times have you played an RPG where you as the DM have crafted this this integral character to the storyline, and all of a sudden your players are off chatting to the goblin in the corner, and they spend an entire session chatting to the goblin in the corner, trying to find out what he knows, even though he is nothing but the toilet cleaner in the place. <laughs> I, I'd be disappointed if my players didn't. But, yeah. <laughs> but I, I like that it, it kind of keeps you on the rails, but still gives you enough options to give that, that nice RPG flavor. Yeah, because you, I mean, you, you want to try and help. I mean, anyone who's been a, 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 a dungeon master knows that sometimes the, the, the group works against its own best interest. Right? Oh, yeah, Some, yeah. Sometimes you, there's a story that's really worth telling and you know you're not going to get around to it in a mm-hmm. month of Sundays if you if you don't kind of get this group kind of uh, moving in, in one. And so with with this, you get your choices, you get to the mm-hmm. but you're playing within a, a sandbox that has been built that has yeah. this. You, you have an um, experience that's going to kind of lead you to where you're meant to go, but you're trying to get the best outcome of where you're trying to go. And in that, you can tell a deep story. So instead mm-hmm. of going like super sandboxy, where it's just like it's, it's very thin and very, very wide, in this we've gone for depth, bringing mm-hmm. in those those confined constraints to be able to make a really interesting, yeah, interesting story really like that you can that. tell a story that people care about. Yeah, but even in uh, in with the the story challenge, the twisted tales part of it, mm. you have this um, timeline mechanic as well drawn in. So with the best will in the world groups will deviate and go into places they shouldn't go into mm. and cost themselves time. The net result is you may find out where you're going eventually, but because you've got there later, mm-hmm. you don't get the benefits of having arrived there later. Mm. Yeah, so there are little things where if you reach this point by this point, then you get extra equipment. If you mm. win, if you've reached this point, then you've taken too long and some random event has triggered in the town or the city you're in. Mm-hmm. And that I think is is really interesting because your players aren't tied to a timeline. They're not tied to, mm. you must complete this within 12 turns. They can complete it within 20 turns. But somebody who's actually a bit more focused and mm-hmm. doesn't meander around poking every dead dog with a stick that they yeah. can find will get their bit sooner and will reap the benefits of that mm-hmm. as well. So it can be your contract, yeah. ki- your contract killers. You're here for a reason. You're doing a job. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so when you, that free company rocks up to town, they, they, they need to get in and out and to get yeah. and make that worth a while. Yeah. And so you don't want to be losing lots of money. Do it whilst you yeah. go through that process. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be getting too sidetracked and you know, no one wants to be fighting a monster when night time comes, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. Words. That's true. And then, I mean, like back to combat, I mean, like you were, you were talking about me, I am not a good choice to actually base any kind of statistical rolling on. I'll tell you what happened. So round one of combat, my priest rocks up and I just grab a handful of dice for a giggle. I roll it and I think I landed, what, 20 damage on the one? (laughs) Something along those lines. Basically, I I crushed the monster's head. Now, the monster's not dead at this point, but one of the things I loved was the monster suddenly went... No, no, no! You, you, you've hit me. You've hurt me. That's not going to stand. And it actually reacts to you, and it actually starts coming after you as well. So it's not just that. Okay, I'll take a swing at you. Bap. Okay, you take a swing at me. Bap. 
there's a nice reactive sort of feel to the enemies in it. Yeah, that's it. Cr- crushing a, a, a broom on his head with a brick on a stick does yes. not kill it in this game. This is a grim dark game. It just makes things angrier. Yes. And so like the more damage you're putting onto this thing, the angrier it gets mm-hmm. and it's going to start lashing out and it's starting to draw cards that are doing that. Mm-hmm. So this is another thing about with the unique mechanics really wanted to make an, an AI system where like we're telling a story during the, 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 the story like part of the game, but we're also telling a story in the fight itself, the way that this, what is this monster? How does it work? Where's it mm-hmm. coming from? You know, what's it doing? And so you've got all these different um, phases so we can have multiple phases so it changes behavior as, as, as triggers happen during mm-hmm. the encounter um, each each monster is unique it's got its own 15 card deck specific yeah. to that monster you're not seeing those abilities again This mm-hmm. is so you've got a story and, other, and in itself that's another mystery that you're unraveling as you mm-hmm. fight and um, there's cards that you kind of like look into that deck gain yeah. a bit of information on that behavior help you game how things are going because you know no one wants to be there when the big smackdown like it comes out and yeah. does a big AOE attack on your group you know sometimes you want to be separated up sometimes you want to be close together sometimes you want to be positioning yourself at certain positions around the monster. Mm. Sometimes you want to be picking that monster apart in a certain way because depending on which body part of the monster you're lopping off in which order, you're going to get benefits for the group. Mm. Um, there's all these kind of considerations trying to make it feel like you're really fighting something, mm-hmm. you know, alive a, a monster. Because it's, it's one of those things that often you have lots and lots and lots of monsters in a game, but the only way that you can make those monsters by having a single card that has a number or something on it. Yeah. We wanted to go way deeper than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, it was nice to actually see as well that whenever the the monster started coming after me, I wasn't just helpless either. I mean, like, Jerry, you were able to play reaction cards to yeah. actually step up and go, no, 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 you come here, come here, come here. Yeah, the, the warden has uh, a few tanky interrupts and mm-hmm. taunts and that sort of thing. And assuming you have kept those cards in your hand mm-hmm. um, and have the animus to play them. It means you can protect other party members or you can get in the way when you need to get in the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you might want to spend those cards for their additional abilities, whether it happens to be fighting for yourself or defending yourself. Yeah. So th- there's a, a, it's a very much cooperative game, mm-hmm. um, especially people who've played sort of MMOs where you have various types within a group so you've got your your damage dealers you've got your tanks you've got your healers Mm. um and working out the best way to approach whatever it is you're attacking uh, with the resources you have at hand because they're not Mm. infinite by any stretch of the imagination they're finite yeah yeah that's it although that does bring us to the combat flow system you guys have built in as well so your character gets a set number of cards in their hand to play these are their abilities they can be spent for defense and they can be spent for attacks as you play those you're playing them down around your character board and as you play a an ability with the same number on it suddenly the cards start flowing around the board until they hit zero again at which point you get to redraw all the cards again so there's there's a certain amount of okay i just did a big attack i'm tired Ooh, okay give me a minute give me a minute okay it's back let's go again i say yeah that's the battle flow system there mm. where you're trying it's about that feeling of breathing because that's it you want to feel in in that moment you want to feel fear mm-hmm. you want to be like you know if you're going to get hit that's going to hurt you know and so what's saying what is then jerry that the that if you get if you don't do something about that monster it will kill you the yeah. team is going to die unless you successfully deal with this situation that so then every fight is a fight for your own survival as well as this contract kill that you're going out for so um so yeah so you, it's that sense of reward you're getting you survive mm. one of these fights you did that it wasn't your yeah. numbers that did that it wasn't your card it was you who did that mm. um and the same way with this battle flow system your cards are going out from your hand you're using them up you're you know mm. you're running out of puff you're breathing hard and then you're trying to bring them back into your hand so you can use them again and keep up that battle that's that kind of like that feeling of keep moving keep fighting keep going until the mm. job's done yeah. but the battle flow kind of systems that's about just trying to capture experiences those emotions that you want to be feeling when you're when you're going through a combat like that. Honestly, it was it was something I really enjoyed about the combat system. Now, we will, of course, be doing a full Let's Play on this, hopefully, and I'm really looking forward to showing people just how both sides of things work. Now, the game is coming to Kickstarter, so the important question is for anybody who's now out there drooling over their keyboard going, oh my God, I need this game, when is it launching? So we're going to Kickstarter on the 8th of October. Mm-hmm. That's our day, that's a Tuesday. And... Um, yeah, so we've got a uh, we've got a whole raft. Okay. Of- I'd like to point out this is the the countdown <laughs> timer at the time of filming. Yeah, filming. The, the eighth of October won't move. Yes, but the the filming date of this versus when it goes out will move forward in time. Therefore, yeah. this will be wrong. Yeah, but but the eighth of October is still correct. 
Yes, but the countdown time is wrong. <laughs> yeah, so the 8th of October. So we've got this um, uh, on our website here. Um, it's probably the best way if you're even remotely interested in, in kind of getting involved with this and diving into the deep wood with us. Um, then the if you go on the website, we've got a sign up there for a newsletter. And that's just going to be a, uh, just once a month, we're sending out a newsletter kind of updating about how the, the progress of the project is going and um, just getting ready for this this Kickstarter in a couple of months. And then we've got um, Facebook and Twitter as well that you can find us on, Shadowborn Games. And um yeah, I really hope that you fancy coming and joining us for this. Yeah, I do have to say I adore the art for this game. I'm going to have to get down and, and just sit down with you for a video just about the art because it is fabulous. Oh, just yes. <laughs> That's the bare necessities. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Why we, wouldn't you? Uh, so yeah, you can find some of our old newsletters on the website here as well from mm -hmm. the last couple of months and uh, we'll be releasing information about the different characters you can play and some mm -hmm. of the mechanics you'll find in the game. Absolutely awesome. Right. Uh, is there anything else we need to cover here? Well, actually, here's an important question. So for the, the very core pledge, what are people going to have arrive? Let's say I just jump in and I say, I want this game. I'm going to jump in on the base pledge. What will I receive? So what you're, um, you're going to be uh, looking at here is the there's, there's kind of different types of games in, on Kickstarter. One of them is like the game that has Lots of plastic, not a lot of cardboard or something like mm. that. You have to a lot, a lot of different models in the box, smaller models, and then you have like things. And then you have games that have like lots and lots of uh, sort of like mechanical depth to them. They have lots of cards, lots of books, lots of things like that. This is kind of a, a bring together of, of, of both. What we have here is we have some ginormous mm -hmm. miniatures and some ginormous um, characters. We've actually gone for a heroic scale for these models because we wanted to create a realistic scale. Mm -hmm. And the way that you can do that, you have to go bigger with the model to kind of keep that that realism um, yeah, intact. Think, oh, yeah, this this kind of illustrates that perfectly. That's it. And so these guys are absolutely um, huge. And um, I think that bear of theirs um, is 55 at the head, I think. Um, and this, the broodmother there that ran the middle, she's um, 135 to the top of her wow. baby, babyest rat. So this is, you know, this is it, it, it's actually the size of a real rat, right? Yeah. Um, and and this well, is just well, you get rats that big. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I've, I've I've never had to deal with rats except for like a friend who had pet rats, but they were tiny babies when I met them. Yeah, this is them. Um, this um, uh, and this is only one of the monsters in the game. So this is a uh, uh, you know one of, of a dozen monsters that we've got um, in the game. We've got fifteen chapters. We've got well, six. Are they characters. coming in the core game or? Yeah. So the, we're the we've got the uh, the base game, which has got a, we've got a standee version of the game, and mm -hmm. then we've got a miniatures version of the game. So basically, okay. depending on which um, sort of level you want to come in at, um, you'll get all of the mechanics of the game, the story of the game, the app, and everything um, which will come with the standee version, mm -hmm. um, if that's the way you want to go. Or you've got the miniature version, which has that mystery box that we were talking about, where you're opening up the mystery box and opening the, the, the Christmas presents each time. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, so there's two, two buy-ins there um, just to make it as accessible as possible, really. And um, I say, so these, when you're getting these, these it's, it's hard it's hard to explain to people who can't actually see the model. Once you mm. see the model, hopefully in Let's Play or something, we'll be able to show you just how, how uh, impressive big there, these, yeah. how big these things are. Um, but it's because we've got this nice intimate fight where you've got like, you know, this, this, this small band of the free company and then this giant horror that you're mm. trying to take down. Um, so yeah, so you'll get you've got the um, six six characters in the game. So we've got the, the Ursus mm -hmm. and the Ranger. We've mm -hmm. got Priest, Warden, and the Witch. Mm -hmm. And oh, who's our sixth one? Check the Kickstarter to find yeah, out. Check the Kickstarter. I've gone completely <laughs> blank. Um, and uh, and yeah, and then we've got all of these these amazing monsters and mm. uh, things going on. the The book the, the book that we're writing is um, is is going to be well over a hundred thousand words, pushing two hundred thousand words already. And it's um yeah, it's going to be incredible. And then obviously we've got wow, stretch you, goals. You're making Aaron Dembski wouldn't work hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's I, I will alone. say he's he's, not... he's one of my favorite authors. So don't burn him out on me. <laughs> yeah, he's he, he is he is incredible, and we've been um yeah. we've just been. In fact, doesn't he live just up the road? from here who Aaron Dembski Bowden I have no idea I thought he was a local boy he may well be I know I, there's one of them I don't there's stalk the authors of books quite you <laughs> yeah so we got we've got we've, we've got had to bring a team in on this to kind of the, yeah. so it's such a such a big undertaking but um you know just having having the level of professionalism we have around the writing just i'd say this is mm. a this is a this isn't just a i suppose there's a, there's a kind of trope sometimes around game stories and things this isn't just like a a a, a thing that's tacked on to mm -hmm. a game this is something that is this has been built around this world this story mm -hmm. and this story is a world-class um kind of undertaking yeah that we want to tell something but we want you to be able to play it rather than just read it mm. Thing. See, well, that's that's one of the great things. I, I love reading fantasy novels, right? And anytime I'm reading one, I always imagine myself as a hero. It's what everybody does. So being able to actually play as the hero in the world, that's kind of the next level to that, which awesome. I, I really like. 
Right, I think, have we covered everything? I think we have. Anything I've missed? Anything you want to, any teasers or anything for stretch goals and anything like that? Well, what I can tell you is like, so we're starting with six characters. Then okay. We, we have some more in the part line. We will hope we can, we can release with them. Okay. That's, um, that's what I'm hoping. So it all depends on how much we can, you know, if we can fun with it. But yeah, there's, there are plans, there are places we're going to go with this and there's, um, maybe even some, some lost chapters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We can the, get to, but um, the apocryphal books of Oath Sworn. That's it. We'll have to <laughs> wait and see. The, come and join the Kickstarter and see what you can find. All right. Well, everybody, I'll tell you what, get your comments in below. Any questions you have, make sure and pop them in there. Make sure and check out the Kickstarter when it launches because this looks like it's going to be an absolutely fantastic game. We'll move on. We'll see you again soon. So, yeah, Jerry, this one has me really excited. I'm loving the idea of a, a AAA class digital narrator for games. I know I know Warren keeps poo-pooing app games, but I like it. <laughs> well, it's got a book with it if you don't want the app. Oh, I know so, that. So but, you can just use that. So. Yeah, but whenever it's Lord Commander Mormont from Game of Thrones <laughs> reading a story to you, yeah. are you really going to pass that, that up? You say that, but he was now food as in pet first. <laughs> I like how once the app gets out of the way, yeah. uh, you can then just get stuck into a, a really interesting mm. mechanic for the actual combat as well. So it, yeah. you've got that two halves to the game, and they don't have to be played consecutively you, yeah. you can yeah play, you can do you a narrative your, night and a yeah, battle you play night your rpg mode first mm-hmm. and then pack it up for the night and come back in and actually play the the miniatures mm-hmm. sort of fight part of the game afterwards so, yeah. yeah and but, i i do like the fighting fantasy path to it that you will get where you're going but you can take very different routes to get there Lloyd. so it's it's not like oh there is only this story screen this story screen this story screen depending on where you go there are going to be moments where you're given like key choices that will lead you down different paths so if nice. you replay this you can have a very different experience which is quite cool cool yeah. right i am going to keep us moving because we got oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it does sound really cool yeah i'm looking forward to seeing more of that yeah Ben, before we get stuck into our next feature mate i think I believe we've got another couple of news items we're going to cover yeah, so uh, the first of these comes out from the guys at the Army Painter, and this is that they announced that they're going to be releasing a, well, their version of a wet palette that's coming out in December. Uh, so for those people that want to get stuck into painting, and they've maybe looked at some of them online, or they, you know, use a homemade one or something like that, and you want to get yourself something that would be useful for your painting journey, then they're coming out one in December. You can check it out on their website right now. Uh, it's a standard sort of uh, sort of seal up set that you can get. It comes with two pieces of the hydrophone that will hold all the water. Then you've got some hydro sheets, things that go over the top, and then things that sort of allow you to put the paint onto and stuff like that. It'll also, uh, as well as being useful as a wet palette, also allow you to carry around your brushes as well. So they've got space in there for you to fit a selection of the different brushes from their range as well. Um, so yeah, just something for those people that maybe are starting in painting. A lot of people have been starting to get into dive into it for Dungeons and Dragons, for example. They've picked up a lot of their starter sets, either for the heroes or the monsters or the new Underdark one that's coming out as well. And so for those people that are starting out in that sort of area and you want to stay with Army Painter and use yeah. all of their techniques and ideas, there's a new wet palette from them coming out in December. Which is very Sweet, cool. because very a wet cool. palette does make all the difference to your painting. It does make a huge difference. I, I use one all the time now because I will maybe paint for 20 minutes, go away for 30 minutes and come back. And on yeah. the wet palette, my paint's still ready to go. Yeah, but I have one of them bodgy ones that I've made myself. Yeah. So I don't have the luxury of having a nice tight fitting lid to keep it like wet sealed, for long yeah. periods of time. Jerry, do you have a sealed one? Or you I, use, like, I, a use, I use a little clip lock uh, Tupperware container. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it seals up well. So I start painting for 10 minutes and then I leave it for two or three days and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really, yeah. and like if you get one of these seal up ones, does it really keep for days? Yeah. Yeah. As long as the, the water doesn't evaporate off, mm. it keeps the paint cool and so the paint doesn't evaporate. And yeah. So it's, mm. it's very handy. I quite like how they've got the little brush. See the little red bit? Mm. Yeah. So the brushes all clip into that, which means that they actually pack away on the inside. Mm-hmm. So your brushes are upside down. So I'm just looking at the point where I'm going, can I just leave the paint on the paintbrush? No, I probably still shouldn't do that. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm, slight, I'm slightly confused about this image, right? Yeah. So obviously the, you can see the lid. Yeah. You can see the paintbrush holdy bit. Yeah. Right? And then you can see yeah. the wet palette. Now, I'll put my paint on the wet palette. Yeah. Uh-huh. Does my brush back over the top? Yeah. So you see the way you've got the bridge there? Yeah. Ah, yeah it sits so, proud so of it. That sits upside down essentially but, uh, so it, it holds the, the paint brushes above your your palette mm. so the paint brushes are which way up this way are I, they I, dropping down like surely we'll need to get one in and open it up. well we would have to get one and, and yeah. have a look at it now, there was a little piece of advice from a man gave me when he first started showing us wet palettes which was if you take your wet palette and after you're done with it actually store it in your refrigerator oh. it keeps the paint even longer huh. does oh. it yeah because it keeps it cool so there is zero evaporation uh, no that's 
I'm not going to say he's wrong, but I am going to say he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you want to dry out something, what's the best place to put it in the fridge or the oven? The oven? No. Really? Yeah. How? Because the oven will cook things. It will, it will bake it. It will destroy it. Whereas if, you, if you've opened a bit of cheese in your fridge, right. it, it desiccates, it dries out and goes rock solid. Right. So, yeah, if you put it in the fridge, it may keep for a day or so. Okay. But you do get evaporation. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't, but is it doesn't the point, get evaporation. Is the point not that it's okay. sealed to stop the evaporation? In that case, you don't need to put it in your fridge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Know. Unless wonder- you particularly want cold paint. Yeah. I wonder about that. Uh, there are times when I, there are times when I imagine Jerry just back, by the way. goes home with a wet pallet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Yeah. He goes home with a wet pallet. Good idea. No, that's that's all I do. I'm just, I'm, I'm just getting pallet. visions of the silence of the lamb. So, sometimes, you know, I go home with a lovely date for the weekend, but most of the time it's just a wet pallet. It's the most I can do. Oh, so you're coming in from the pub two o'clock in the morning. With my wet pallet under yeah. my arm. Oh, there's, no, there's nothing here to eat. Well, there's some paint I don't need. <laughs> Gone. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right, next up, Ben, what have we got? So this oh, wait, we've got Fire Forge Living Dead and the yes. Men. Oh, yeah. This is what happens when Lloyd doesn't read the running order. He gets surprised by things that <laughs> pop up. So, so yeah, uh, Fireforge have now put out pre-orders for six of their plastic sets that are going to be releasing at the start of October uh, for their Forgotten World fantasy game. So, yeah. Man, I was so uh, tempted about these. Mm. They were on Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. I, really had to, I really had to rein in from not buying these. Oh, uh, look and at then, the villagers. And then we were talking about them on Points of View yesterday. Oh, man. Mm. <sighs> the 4th of October, did we decide? Fourth slash it's eight, it's depending oh, on where you're after. So difficult Brexit wise. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at those. Wait, yeah. No, no, I just cut them. No, 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 no I'm no. going to the first one because I know Ben's going to work through, so I need to be on the first one. Oh, but I need to say more. Look at that. That's I, so I cool. like this one guy who's just carrying his head. That is mm-hmm. nice. That's it's a really great. nice touch. It's, it's one of the things that I actually think is really good about what they've done with these plastics is that normally when you see people doing living dead or undead sets, it's traditionally just about the zombies which is kind of the second set that you can see there but i really like that we're seeing some of the undead soldiers and they're not all from the same army as well so they're all from different sort of uh, factions and things like that because obviously on the battlefield the necromancer doesn't care he'll raise everybody if he can mm-hmm. and uh, i thought these were very very cool indeed and there's so much character built into them and i've heard from a lot of people already that have got stuff from the kickstarter that the detail is pretty much as you see it here uh, they have been saying there's a few issues with building you've got to be very very careful about what legs you put on on that kind of thing there's some sort of like mismatch stuff going on but apart from that these are meant to be pretty damn good uh, plastic kits and as you can see they've got lots of undead options there as well as the northmen who are definitely not starks uh, but yeah so some cool definitely stuff not starks. well what <laughs> fire forward have been doing plastics for a while now and they've all been great yeah. kits so i don't think the, the quality was ever going to be in doubt with no. what they, they produced from the kickstarter yeah Really nice Man, stuff. If you're, is there, is there Northmen? Like, here we go. Oh, Gallery. Oh, look at that. For me, the weak point in this set is the undead calf. Really? I like they, the, I they've love got the un- skelly heads and stuff, haven't well, they? Yeah, and it's, not, it's, it's the styling. I like the undead. Go back to the undead troops and then we'll work our way all down. Right, all right. So, right, so the undead soldiers. Yeah, undead soldiers, look. That looks really cool to me because I can imagine it's not that far away from historically looking sort yeah. of armies. Yeah. Yeah. They do just look like these zombies were dead on the battlefield yeah. and raised up again. I've got all of them wandering yeah. around and then you go yeah. down to the villagers again. Yeah. I do like how much of a mishmash there is in these two sets. There's a lot of variation in here. Mm-hmm. But then you come down to the undead calf. And the undead calf looked nothing like the alive human calf. Yeah. They, they've yeah. suddenly got too complicated for me. Yeah, they're, you know, they've like, been we, dead a little too long. When you're looking at the calf, like for me, the undead calf should have looked like Human. the Northmen calf, yeah. just dead, but dead. But dead. Yeah, or, but they don't because the other ones kind of do yeah. look a little bit like they're in the same universe. Whereas these, for yeah. me, take mm-hmm. it out a wee bit. Yeah, yeah when you look at the the human defenders of the North there, and then you have a look up at these guys. The guy on the far left here looks pretty similar. Yeah, they've, they've all got similar style. Now, what I will say is. This fellow on the far right mm. with the bassinet that's held open. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That looks like it's a more complicated overlapping plate. Yes. So they might release a heavy cavalry matching that, in which case you might get the heavy cavalry that matches the undead. Maybe. That's the, a possibility. In which case that's spot on. I would say painting it purple. 
that's probably the most jarring part. <sighs> it's, a, yeah. it's the necromancer's gone out with yeah. this purple paint and painted all his undead. <laughs> if they just kept that regular steel or like a black enamel or something that's realistic yeah, on matches yeah. and then weather it. They've been trying to be too weird to be like, undead, yeah. The thing that I, the thing that I like about it uh, was the uh, sort of zombie-ish skeletal nature of the horses. I think that was a nice mix between the two, rather than doing them entirely skeletal or entirely zombie, uh, entirely zombified. I think it's a really good match, and it allows you to keep the the power of the cavalry without it, with, with obviously not sacrificing anything of the undead quality to it. Yeah. But that's why I would have basically taken the Northman cavalry off mm. if it had looked like that. But with the zombification and bones yeah. and stuff, I'd have been happy as Larry. Yeah. Because look, that's to me. Because I like my fantasy to have a little bit of believability yeah. to it, yeah. as well as being fantasy. And that, to me, you know, look at those has a bit of believability. Yeah. The, there's no yeah, necromancer blacksmith banging <laughs> out bat helmets and yeah. bat yeah. armor for all the undead people. Because I have yeah. my Games yeah. Workshop ones, and I've never built them because they're bat crazy. Yeah, it's bat, 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 bat. <laughs> everywhere. Bats everywhere is bloody bat wings. But if they don't have that, <laughs> then that's all those necromancer blacksmiths out of business <laughs> yeah. who are they going to sell the bat winged helmets to and <laughs> yeah, what about their bat. their necromancer family they need food screw their necromancer family i don't want no more, to be chewed off. no more bat wings <laughs> Bones to be sucked. my, my, oh, my favorite my favorite groups the uh the north men bowmen i really yeah. like those yeah. Yeah. They've got the little braziers Mm. Yeah, they remind me a little bit of the traditional, well, I think it was the old uh, plastic kit for the Bretonians where you've got your archers and stuff yeah. for them. They're very cool. Obviously, with the, these guys have got a slightly more uh, northern theme to them, obviously, but uh, rather than French, but uh, really very cool. The, the quilted uh, gambies on them as well. It looks very nice. Mm -hmm. They're really cool. Yeah. Mm. I, would, I wouldn't paint them as uniform as that. I'd have them a bit more mishmashy because, yeah. again, I'd like yeah. to take my, my fantasy yeah. army a little bit towards yeah. more... You know, nobody's going to have the same stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people have the same stuff. Well, some d people have the same stuff. Depends how rich the person <laughs> who's funding the army is. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. But I think there's a great set there for fantasy. Oh, really? yeah. You, yeah. you could build a, a great army out of that. You just need a, a command section for them. Oh, it's so tempting. Like, yeah. I can see that in, like, the next saga magic book that comes out. <laughs> Instead mm. of the Fire Forge, they've got, like, a cool-looking Fire Forge-based army in it. Yeah. The next time they release a book, it'll be that stuff as the Fire Forge oh, yeah, based yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, guaranteed. So or, cool. Or going mad for my Kingdoms of Men when the Uncharted Empires comes out. Good yeah. shout. Because I imagine they'll get the same treatment. If you haven't seen Fire Forge, they tend to do plastic sets, but then for the heroes, mm. there'll be resin. Ah, yeah, see. resin. So yeah. we'll probably see resin commanders for those, which should look fairly stunning. Yeah, yeah, I have a resin commander for my stuff, but I wasn't entirely taken. Where you not? I love Who was the, it? I love the plastics. It was um, Alexander Nevsky uh, up on his yeah. horse. But yeah. the horse just seemed a bit, it just, just seemed a little bit rough mm. See, I, compared I, to the plastics. I quite you know like I mean. the, the ones they've done for the Teutonics Grandmaster. He mm. looks lovely. Mm. You see, I'm at that point. not to do Teutonics. Trying to be good. You see, at that point, I would be like veering into because they've got a close relationship with VMV. Yeah. Mm. If I was going down that route, I'd be like, "Oh, I'll get some VMV resin stuff as my a, like bulk out my troops with the with the Fireforge plastics, and then whack the VMV guys in." Mm. Yes, Ben. There's a there's a company called Black Scorpion uh, that have mm. done uh, a new range of fantasy miniatures, and they're kind of around. Imagine sort of Middenheimers from one yeah. fantasy, so sort of like Ulrich and followers. They'd be amazing characters uh, to go alongside these. I think. Is this Black nice. Scorpion as in the pirate game? Cutless. The pirates and, 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 and cowboys and stuff, yeah. yeah. I still want to get a game of Cutlass on at some point. <laughs> I, I bought the rule book, I bought miniatures, I never got to play. Do you know what you need? You need a solo real chat. Solo, solo real chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a reference to Pointless Views. Go check it out. Yeah, yeah. Right, we're moving into our, our second feature. Yes. Justin, you're excited about this as well, mate. Yeah, so uh, the guys at Mythic Games are bringing Joan of Arc back to Kickstarter, not for a reprint but for a 1.5 rules update where they're going to be adding in new forces, new adventures, oh, new yes. scenarios. And obviously you can still jump in and get everything that was there the first time around. This so. is what we've seen the epic trailer for a couple yes. of weeks ago. Yes. Oh man, let's get stuck into this. Oh. Hey guys, we are back in the studio. We are joined by Leo and Az from Mythic Games. Uh, I've also got Jerry here because Hello. this week with the guys across, myself and Jerry have been going hammer and tongs at each other in Joan of Arc. <laughs> But, as always, we love getting an update from you guys with what's going on mm -hmm. with the Mythic Games in general, yeah. but especially 
Time of Legends, Joan of Arc has some big news this week. Right. We're three days away. We're three days away. We're three days away. Three That's days the big and news. counting. Three days and counting. We're going to kickstart our baby. First of October, we're coming back. <laughs> Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, 1.5. The entire thing, everything, all of this, all of this <laughs> is coming oh, wow. back. Core box, reliquary box, siege, dragon, apocalypse, legendary battles, Ars Nova, village pack, unleash hell, the compendium, the siege uh, equipment, the Ottomans, the plunder, it's all coming back back to kickstart on the 1st of October and there's going to be more of course but yeah, <laughs> I, I, okay okay I'm a bit excited alright I'm a bit excited <laughs> did you feed him like a Red Bull or something before we, we, we hit record here he's it's, always like that really yeah. that's good to have in the office <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really exciting time for us it's not just this is not just a new kickstarter mm -hmm. you know, we have done Solomon Kane we have done Rack Busters we've done Super Fantasy Brawl we collaborated yep. with Monolith uh, on Mythic Battles Pantheon mm -hmm. we've been through kickstarters before this is not the same yep. this is Joan of Arc Time of Legends, 1.5. Yes. This is not only new stuff. This is also going back. It's also reinventing. It's also adding more. It's, it's improving. Mm -hmm. It's refining. It's, it's just taking the whole world, pushing it over a thousand minis, over 1,100 minis, in fact. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, right. What, one, one more time, please. How many? I think initially it's 1,100 plus. But initially, because again, we're not treating this just as a simple mm -hmm. Kickstarter, we're going to be doing stretch goals, we're going to be adding more content, we're going to be expanding it over the, the, the campaign. For us, this is a whole Kickstarter on its own, and mm -hmm. it's a revisiting of probably what is, you know, Leo's baby's loves. You it's know? our biggest success so far. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a game that changed everything for us. Uh, and yes, it's... Uh, it's a big event for mm. us, and I hope for everybody, not, not only the people who loved uh, the game the first time, but also the, the newcomers, the people who missed it, or people who've seen all the pictures on the social medias of people receiving uh, their games mm -hmm. and just being excited and painting them. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's a, a, a game of all extremes because, you know, the scale, uh, the number of minis, the variety of ways you can play. It really is a game that stands out from all other games simply just by the, the, the sheer amount of material you can get. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we want to kind of start at the start, right? I mean, this, this is one of the blessings. It's kind of a, a little bit of behind the curtain when it comes to being a board game publisher, because mm -hmm. normally we're with 3D printed minis, we're with, you know, with resin, we're with fragile prototypes that we're treasuring our lives with. Yeah. But we, of course, because, you know, we're looking at Time of Legends to one of the first campaign, you know, being delivered, you know, 10 and a half thousand backers have the majority of all their pledges. Uh, and now we're going back to Kickstarter and we have some of the plastic minis here, which have mm -hmm. been painted by, by Seb Levine, you know, our <laughs> In-house painter. You, you know my thoughts on Seb. Seb, yeah. I love you, buddy, but I hate you at the same time for your talent. I don't know who, who, how many souls he sold to, yeah. to get the skill he I, has, but it's not. He's visited like at least a hundred crossroads at midnight. <laughs> we love you, Seb. Like we really do. Oh yeah. So we kind of wanted to start at the start a little bit and kind of talk. You know, we obviously have the dragon. You know, we have uh, over here. We have, we have the siege a little. Like, I mean, I say the siege. This is like a third of the siege yep. walls. Uh, you know, we have the devil. We have the leviathan. We have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We mm -hmm. have all the kind of big features. But we also wanted to come back because it really is also about the, the troops, about the heroes, about the characters, um, and about the things we start with. And now we have the final plastic ones. We can say, the proof is in the pudding. Everything mm -hmm. we said we would do, we did, and have a look at some of these. Mm -hmm. Leo, who do you want to start with? I want to show some of these bad boys off. Oh my God. <laughs> well, well, well. I want to see the well. You want to see the well? <laughs> okay, start with that, the well. That is the most tragic so, thing. So, well, okay, let's show right. the well. Look at our gorgeous but well. What we can, <laughs> well done. What, what, we can, what we can say with that is that we don't only sell minis. It's good to be back, Justin. We don't, do, back. We don't only sell uh, figures and mm. humans in this mm -hmm. game. We sell all sorts of terrain uh, elements and plenty of them. And... That's Even an incredible bucket. number. So mm -hmm. that means you, uh, you get to play like in a mini world with mm -hmm. everything. So you're completely immersed. You you have, of course, uh, the, well, the well, <laughs> the, uh, the, the houses, well like the big one, the small ones, uh, you, you have all, uh, all of the uh, the terrain element, like uh, in the siege, you have a full castle, mm -hmm. a full castle, which with incredibly, incredible details, uh, you have, uh, um, the village expansion with uh, with so many things. You have trees, you have bushes, you have rocks. Uh, you name it, you have it. Uh, it's yeah. When yeah, it's so mm -hmm. yeah. It, and when you play, when you set up a game, you really are into into the the universe. Yeah. And this was made possible because of uh, the scale we chose. Yeah. We we didn't do. Uh, 28, 32, 35 millimeters uh, game like 
you have so many, we chose the legendary scale, mm -hmm. which is 15, 16 millimeters, uh, and it allows you to play like with big epic battles on your table. You don't need a huge table, mm -hmm. uh, even though some of our scenarios take a lot of space because we're crazy. But you, <laughs> you, you, you can you can play it uh, mm -hmm. on your on your uh, on your table. On well, your, I mean, like, really. This week, myself and Jerry got to play the Siege of uh, Calais, and that's one of the biggest scenarios you guys do. Oh my god, it's epic. You know, we had it laid out on this table, yeah. and it was so much fun. There, I, I took a lot of time to take pictures of you guys, of you guys preparing to play that, because as, and the fun thing about the deployment of the Siege of Calais is you start with, you start with the walls, and you start with the palaces, then you actually have a, it's not just the scenario doesn't tell you where you deploy, as you guys know you get to choose that. Mm -hmm. So Justin, you were starting by placing your citizens in Calais. Then Jerry was getting to deploy as he put his forces besieging the city, uh, sieging mm -hmm. the city outside. And then you got to then deploy your forces of, of King Philippe coming from behind to save Calais. And as, as you guys were building it up, I was taking photos and really enjoying <laughs> and just seeing you thinking it through. It, and whenever you lifted those like six units of mounted, mounted knights and put them out to the side, I was like, oh, that's epic. I could see you charging, looking at that trebuchet and being like, you're mine. <laughs> I, I, I realized that I need to eliminate you and save the it, city. It was it's interesting to see what happened. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to have that your feedback funny. because you you recently played like four games. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And can you what can you say as as you discovered it or you rediscovered it? Uh, can what can you say about the the this game and the experience? The mechanics themselves allow the game to be everything from a and well with the Siege of Calais realistically a historical recreation, uh, so a, a hex and counter strategy battle game, all the way down to playing very small mythical fantasy games where the mechanics letting you try and slam an archangel's face into the side of a church with a dragon is perfectly <laughs> yeah, thanks, <feasible. laughs> um, and, and at no point do you feel like the game itself is trying to overreach or the mechanics aren't there to allow you to play. So you can't you can have those completely accurate representations mm -hmm. of a historical game, and you can have the completely fantastical mythical games, and everywhere in between. And the scenarios can be as big or and sprawling. Where I, I assume you could write your own scenarios and play them over the course of days. Yeah, uh, if you they do have battle mode. Yeah, so yeah. having all of that in there, um, with that rule set being so flexible to allow you to do it, and to have things like the the siege deck to show the siege has been ongoing. You haven't just turned up and are playing the siege at this point with these people. You're mm -hmm. going, well, here's the intervening yeah, that was year, year beforehand. Because you, you said and to me, I, said, some pieces. I, I would have done stuff, but I would have poisoned the water. Where's that car so I can throw it yeah. in the well? And we were like, no, no, we have something to represent yeah, yeah, yeah. that. And you were like, oh, great. This yeah. is, and I was so nice <laughs> seeing you guys play that through. Saves yeah. me having to murder a load of cows and shove them over the wall. <laughs> and he says I'm the villain. <laughs> That's just merely a way to get you out. That is, that is how you see, yeah. right? That, that removes yeah. the citizens but leave the building standing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will say, I mean, like the, the craft that even goes into the scenarios that you guys have built, there are so many things that the the system can do but you're not throwing everything at it at one time you're using the components of the system that are required to represent each scenario mm -hmm. properly so if i'm playing something quite small with civilians and stuff around that i'm wanting to you know pick them up get their bonuses maybe actually start chatting to them to get an additional effect or something you have that but it's always in the appropriate place mm -hmm. in the appropriate scenario it doesn't get in the way of did, what you're trying to represent you, uh, didn't you threaten to burn down a church at one point by, 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 <laughs> start, by starting a discussion with a priest that went a bit no 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 yeah. he was talking to the priest <laughs> in calais yeah this was a french priest in, in a french city talking to english <laughs> yeah collaborating with the english <gasps> oh no 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 no, no. Can't, can't collaborate if you're the clergy <laughs> <laughs> you, he was a french priest he do i need to, to get to his he answers to the pope in rome that's how it goes it goes the pope the clergy all the nations and this is the breakdown for medieval europe yeah. don't forget this if if, oh, if you want to see the continuation of this moral else. dispute please show, tune yeah. in to all of the let's plays but this, yeah. this is it the stories that evolve through the scenarios <laughs> yeah. are really you know we're looking at a game with dozens upon dozens of different scenarios and mm -hmm. it's not just a different map layout it is no. a completely different world every yeah. time you sit down to play. and even if you play the same scenario one or more times you're going to see different things yeah. happening because you're going to try different tactics yeah. i mean like we played our very first one where it was reteaching me the game and teaching Jerry the game for the first time. We played yeah. it off camera once 
and then the game we played on camera played out completely differently mm-hmm. to what we saw off camera yeah. and I love whenever that can happen just you change what you do just a little bit and it just swings the game just edges yeah. it in your favour and it's really nice like that so the key thing is that the, the Kickstarter is coming back in the 1st of October mm-hmm. and everything obviously that you, that you see here will be coming back so we're looking at the core box all the stretch goals from the very first campaign which we bundled all together into what we call the Reliquary box is essentially the core box and the Reliquary box are what is the base game essentially those two massive boxes are both required to get through your, your start introduction to the game this you, depending on then what you like you'll have likes of the siege and legendary battles and village pack if you're more into the historical and tactical but if you're more into the mythical and, and the legendary stuff things like the apocalypse uh, things like the Unleash, Unleash Hell and the Dragon are really going to appeal to you so you can kind of pick and mix and everything essentially that we had before mm-hmm. will be back again in the new campaign but it wouldn't be us if we didn't try and do something more and kind of expand the world a little bit. Mm. And we had a lot of requests from backers. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we, we, are, we do like to listen to backers. We've talked a lot about the future of, of Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. We've talked about the living battle mode. Mm-hmm. We've talked about, we did a big survey where we had backers reply to us and we saw a lot of interest, very much an equal interest in both the mythical and tactical scenario types. We thought it'd be good to know if there was one that was really resonating more than the other. Mm-hmm. There was a very even result. They were both you know, very much interested in both types. Mm-hmm. And then we also had the, the, the digital scenario creator as well. So we have these four different ways to play. But we also kind of looked at on, on feedback on forums and BGG and said, what's the part of this kind of time period medieval that people really wanted to get? And the one that really, really got a lot of a lot of press, a lot of, a lot of actions was the Teutonic Knights. Mm. Uh, the, the order. The, the, have you got the, the full Teutonic name? Order, the the um, order of, sorry. I put you bro- on the spot, sorry. The Brothers yeah. of the Order of the House, of the German House of St. Mary of Jerusalem. Is the full look name. at that that's even you, better than you, I thought you were going to do you could see why they would shorten it to Teutonic <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to be adding to this already ridiculous collection as mm. I mentioned earlier and um, we're going to be pushing it to over 1100 different minis yeah and we're going to be looking at oh that. yes so Leo this is probably this is one of the head honchos right yes Winrich von Kniepode uh, he's yeah, he's a, the head of the uh, well at that time because it's a it, grandmaster. It, it, yeah. It's it's he's a grandmaster. It's still uh, the Hundred Years' War, and actually this guy, uh, you know, there were truce at some moments mm. during the this war, and he recruited both English and French knights. And there's a famous battle uh, called uh, the Strever, the Battle of the Strever River, mm-hmm. where he was with these French and, and uh, English knights uh, doing raids on uh, in central Lithuania, mm-hmm. getting loot and, and everything. And they were surrounded by uh, Lithuanians' uh, light forces, and they had to cross a, a frozen river. But it was mm-hmm. very dangerous because they didn't know if they were going to drown because they didn't know how thick the the, the ice was. The yeah. ice was. So it's it's a very iconic battle that a lot of people think about when the the we we, we mentioned this period, which is exactly the Hundred Years War. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but it's a little more east, mm-hmm. which means we can bring some specific. Uh, things to to the new expansion like snow uh, tiles, uh, uh, you know the, the 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 rules for for the ice, yeah. and of course there's another very very famous big big battle. We'll come we'll, we'll come to it. We'll come so to okay. it. Yeah, we're done. Oh, the, there's 150 years yeah. of the Northern Crusades. There's quite a few big <laughs> battles, uh, as as you can probably guess. Jerry likes his uh, historical. The, oh yes, the, the he's Stadt very very into fun. history. Yeah. So we we have a uh, Seb's done us a yeah. beautiful uh, oh yes, painted version a gorgeous, of gorgeous gorgeous painted version. Just to show what we're aiming for so you know here's Joan we'll get Joan in there as a, as a bit of a comparison so you can see mm. obviously we have these bulky uh, what, do you actually know Jerry because uh, the, the name excuse me when they have the horses dressed in this way when they have the kind of Cap- comparison is the name for the horse curtains which I think wow. you're talking horse about horse curtains yeah. no I prefer <laughs> horse, curtains. horse curtains you know, these, these, these Teutonic Knights seem to have inspired the Games Workshop when they did the Dark Angels yep yeah. for yeah. sure oh, oh for gu- sure. guaranteed or yeah. the, the, the Black Templars oh the yeah. Black Templars oh. also yeah, yeah. yeah. well but yeah, but the Black Templars are just, well, Hoss Peddlers. No, yeah, 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 no. Here's the question. The Maltese maybe cross. more yeah. the Dark Angels. Well, you see, I'm, I'm going to show my ignorance a little bit, but the Teutonic Knights and the Knights Templar, different organizations yeah. or linked in any way? No. No? Okay. No, uh, all the um, orders, Milton Christie, had to get their own papal uh, bull to establish them. So, and there's a, there's loads of them. There's the big ones that people know. So like the Hospitallers, the Teutonics, the Templars, mm-hmm. uh, Livonians up near Estonia, mm. uh, the Knights of the, uh, the Leopard Knights of Lazarus. Leo, are you taking notes? So mm-hmm. I, yeah, love, the, I love that. <laughs> the, there are, there are loads and some of them were massive. Mm. Some of them became massive. The Templars only started with eight Knights. Really? Plus a monk. 
but then they became one of the biggest banking houses in Europe. So, so yeah, the, the Teutonics are there and the Ordenstadt and, and that they formed, which was the, the sort of the lands they took over during the Northern Crusades mm-hmm. were quite interesting as they tried to sort of bridge a gap. Mm. There's so much for us to explore. There is, there really like, is. Just, it's, we could go on. The, the really interesting thing for me, which I don't even know if you've, you've thought about, because um, you know, you're kind of going into that Teutonic area, and uh, is it a spoiler if I say who they're fighting against? No. 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 So, so there's the Polish-Lithuanian alliance. Yes. You already have the Ottoman Turks and Vlad Tepish. Yes. Yep. And, yes, and obviously, uh, at one point, Vlad was leading, uh, mm-hmm. was supported by the, uh, the, the Polish and uh, yes. the, the Polish. Yeah, Dutch absolutely. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. So, yes. at that point, you've got another force that you can tack yeah. into the original set and do your absolutely, whole yes. set of. Uh, yeah, that is you totally have planned. Keep, keep an eye on our living sure. battle mode. Yes, that's absolutely planned. Planned. Yes. <laughs> do, do we need to like rent out a Jerry to you for like a week? <laughs> oh, absolutely, Jerry. Yes. Jerry's welcome at Mythic Games <laughs> offices <laughs> anytime. Um, yeah, I mean, so we'll, we'll delve into. Mm-hmm. A few mm. more, just because we need to show off some shinies, yeah. right? Oh, that's lovely. I mean, yeah, this this is giving us a chance to really. I mean, we, we did foot knights before, mm. you know. We we did you know heavy, heavy armor, and um, we obviously you know, we're looking a lot at the edge of chivalry, where the longbow yeah. and the mounted cavalry were the, were they be all and end all at the time, um, and but this is giving us a chance to really look at new styles, right? Yeah, the big heater shield on him. Mm. Well, is that a big uh, two hundred? He's yeah, he's he's rocking his. Uh, a spy hunter. Yeah, I was I was going to say the German name, but I wasn't sure if I was yeah. correct with it. Yeah, it's nice. You know, and they, they play differently. Uh, yeah. you, you, well, you've played uh, oh, yeah. uh, the, the Teutonic Knights in one scenario. Mm-hmm. They, they play differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we're trying to you know bring a, a different feeling to a lot of the, the units because there, there's not as much variety mm-hmm. with the Teutonic Knights as, as you had in other ways. So, for example, this is the Teutonic Sergeant on foot, which is mm-hmm. using something more like, I mean, I would call it a pole arm. Mm. Yeah, uh, pull arms fine because it, it will be whether mm-hmm. it's a put it on a shot, a, a locker axe or a, a halberd, whatever. Yep. It's, they're all still pull arms. Yeah, and you'll see here we, we're kind of showing that a, a big part of what we want to, like to do with Joan of Arc is to mix and match our units a little mm-hmm. bit. So although we have lots of different sculpts, when you come to if you're into painting or you come to playing mm-hmm. this on the table, you can have lots of different styles on one base that give you that really epic battle feeling whenever you put it on the mm-hmm. tabletop. Yeah. You know, we had some queries about you know why we decided to go with bases of you know three or two units instead of just minis on their own and it's the feeling you know mm. I love the term fondle factor I love this this aesthetic thing that's big for me I miss that saying Move, moving it around a battlefield <laughs> yeah. feels epic when you're pushing you know yeah. proper units of guys um, even if it is only representative of, yeah. of one of one in, in terms of mm. gameplay um, obviously the Mounted Teutonic Knights you know <laughs> uh, we're looking at doing a couple of different sculptures of these as well Seb's taking a little bit of liberty um, taking some inspiration from some of the art that we've, we've had done and has actually done some of the banners yeah. uh, himself as well Yes, Ooh, very nice. nice. Yes, I mean, you we'll can't, you can't stop can, that man being amazing. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, yeah, you do these at home yourselves, kids. Yes. Gorgeous mm-hmm, work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's just a bit of If you've, yeah, um, if you've seen the trailer um, where you get to see these guys charging across mm. the battlefield and see them kind of heading out, it's, mm-hmm. it's really, uh, I would say heartwarming, that's not the right term, but you know what I mean. It lifts Inspiring. you up. Inspiring. Inspiring, yeah. <laughs> My little heart just beats whenever I see the, the Tonic Knights. No, not going to say what I was going to say there. <laughs> um, we get a little teaser of some of the cars. Of course, we're going to go into more detail. We've got the Let's yeah. Plays with you guys as well. But something we mm. wanted to tap into was obviously the, the religious and kind of quite um, stalwart kind of feeling of these guys. So that a lot of them come with the impetuous keyword and the yeah. prayer keyword. Um, and of course, the charge uh, keyword. Yes. So they're going to follow up. They're going to push through, especially mm. when you're thinking about them kind of fighting uh, pagans or kind mm. of you know, anything that's going against the church. They're very... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're, they're going to kind of charge on through. And a, of course, bit of, a bit of... Of extreme uh, yes. Mm. Um, well, I, so I, I did hear a mild cry of "God wills it" from Jerry <laughs> side of the table at one point. <laughs> Deus Luvolt. <laughs> so you're starting to see uh, everyday troops with with these uh, with many keywords. You know, three keywords is a lot yeah. for troops and things like prayer. Mm. You know, so this is something that's normally more reserved for angelic or, or key characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're now kind of um, getting to embrace uh, not just kind of holy and unholy, but slightly different orders. And we'll kind of come to more on that. And I don't want to jump mm-hmm. too far ahead of myself. Um, and we're really looking at some of the hardest hitting, most well defended uh, in terms of gameplay. You mm-hmm. might have small numbers of these in the table. You might be drastically outnumbered in terms of actual minis and units in, mm. in a battle but they're going to every single night is going to matter yeah see yeah. it's they're it's, very resistant mm, very yeah. resistant it's a little extra l- rules like this that just bend the probabilities on the dice yep. in their favor that little bit more that just makes them super tough 
Yeah, we, yeah well, they yeah. are very, very resistant mm-hmm. to, well, when they are attacked, so they, they on four chance out of six mm-hmm. to to get a shield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this, this, this is, you know, we really wanted to make sure that this new expansion They're felt space right. That, yeah, that, yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that the Teutonic Knights really felt different to other things yeah. on the table. And, and they are monastic knights, so it, it, it's a monastic order. They, mm-hmm. They're monks. Yeah. Monks first and foremost. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. and so they, they are, they've got their prayer. Uh, the Battle of uh, Strevia River that yes. you were talking about, that allegedly, and it was a German chronicler, but allegedly that was uh, approximately 68 casualties for the Germans. So for the, well, I said for the Germans, for the Teutonics, uh, eight knights and 60 other people. other people. Other <laughs> people. Other people against 18,000 Lithuanian. Now, those wow. numbers might be slightly skewed. <laughs> we're not saying Probably. That, yeah, but you know. But it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's, they, were, they were elite. Yeah. So, I mean, speaking about oh, big battles. This is so no the Jerry. other very iconic. Uh, so this is, this is obviously not one of our no, pieces no. of art. This is something done, I believe, at the, the end of the kind of 19th century, this piece was done. And this is depicting one of the kind of, I don't know, best known battles that goes by two different Most names. iconic, yeah. 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 Two, but two different names, yes. Uh, so the German would be the Battle of Grunwald. Yeah, that's the one I always mispronounce. Yeah. And uh, the Battle of Tannenberg. Now, there's a good reason to go for Grunwald over Tannenberg, because there was a Battle of Tannenberg in the Second World War as well. Ah, oh, okay. If you happen to go to the Battle of Tannenberg, 1410. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of Tannenberg, Mark One. So, as you know, as as the guys already alluded to, yeah. mm-hmm. we couldn't we couldn't do the Teutonic Order without looking towards the, the, the Baltic. The two regions. characters that we see here are in the game, of course. Yes, let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, get him as the Grand Duke of Lithuania is yeah. one of our. Mm. You know, he, he's going to be something. One thing, if you've played Time of Legends, Joan of Arc at, at all, we we may have lots of minis, but actually, you can times them in a minis we have by the amount of different uh, characters several mm-hmm. times over. Because what we'll do is we'll pick out not just the key characters, but you'll mm-hmm. also be able to use them representing different heroes, different mm-hmm. time periods. Because of course, we we want to delve into all the aspects of the history. So this is an early. Uh, sculpt, just a, just a prototype sculpt, of course, but the detail that mm. we're aiming for with these guys is just impeccable. It does appear to be trampling somebody's standard underfoot there. I really hope that that's not <laughs> a Teutonic cross there. I'm sure we can get Seb to paint it up Teutonic just for you, Jerry. Say, shouldn't be doing that. So you, as you said, Leo, this is uh, some of the most important, two of the most important characters. Yeah. So of course, yes. I'll, I'll go past the, the generic night mini for a minute and we'll have a quick look. I'm not going to try and murder this. Ladislas, <laughs> King of Poland. Yes. And he was, and he was, second. he was the Grand Duke yeah. of Lithuania at one point as well. And yeah. um, this was, I either got my dates or not my strong point. Oh, well, this would be um, late 1300s into the early 1400s. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the Northern Crusades finished. Uh, Tannenberg slash Grunwald mm-hmm. was uh, 1410 and then the final treaty was like 1424 so even though the Teutonics got a massive kicking yeah this is a forest, turning point yeah. a, a seriously seriously massive it's one of the biggest it, never mind the Northern Crusades it is one of the largest medieval yeah. battles full stop in Europe and it's funny you touched on that because there's, there's the, the accounts of the battle are super interesting, especially with the, the Lithuanians attacking initially and then, and then supposedly from the Teutonic Order fleeing. Yeah. But actually there was there was other accounts that said, no, it was a strategic for them to come around the back. <laughs> yeah. And we, we're looking at potentially uh, splitting that that battle into potentially oh, yeah. two, two different yes, scenarios. Exactly. Because it's yeah. too large. Because there's yeah. so much to yes. take away yeah. from it. And even, even after that, the Teutonic Order weren't finished um, because... They lost, um, I think they lost their Grand Master. They did. Uh, at Tannenberg. But the, the treaty wasn't formed because they managed to hold, um, oh, it has two names as well. Marienburg is yeah. the name I know it by. It has another name. It's like Mole Chuck or something like that. But they, they had a, a preceptory there. That's where the, the head of the order was. Uh, and it was besieged subsequent to Tannenberg, but they, they held that siege mm-hmm. despite mm-hmm. having lost most of their order yep. in Grunwald. So yeah, fun it's, times. It's, it, for us, it's a whole new side of the Hundred Years' War yes. to start exploring yes. that we didn't initially and let us expand the game massively. And we'll cover the historical battles. And mm. as you said, like this uh, Grunwald or Tannenberg will probably be, be split in two with the first, uh, the first part uh, influencing mm. the second one. But that's not all. We, yeah. we will also cover the pagans. Yeah. Right? Mm. Ooh. Now, well, we have a little bit, a little bit of a tease, just because, of course, we can't 
you know, look at the Polish and the Twins, right? Looking at some of their troops. And some yes, of their, yes, yes. Very interesting. Yeah. We actually have, um, we, we've learned a lot from the first game. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, we're going to, with the new Kickstarter 1.5, we're going to be doing a new rulebook. Um, mm-hmm. So anyone who backs uh, the campaign, of course, will be getting the updated rulebook for the, for the second campaign. Mm-hmm. If you backed the previous campaign, um, of course, we'll have a digital PDF of the new rulebook. But if you also back anything, so up to $20 or more, if you buy some mm-hmm. dice or a dice tower or you buy a new expansion or anything at all that you back, if you're on the second campaign and you did back the first one, mm-hmm. we will send you um, a hardback um, scenario collection nice. of all the scenarios from, from the entire range, plus a, a copy of the 1.5 rulebook as well mm-hmm. for every copy of Joan of Arc you got in the original campaign. Mm-hmm. So if you are an original backer um, and you, you want the stuff, it's all going to be there digitally, but if you want physical components, as long as you put $20 on anything you want, and it's that, we will then add the extra stuff on top for free, ship for free as well. And we learned a lot, you know, from the first campaign, a load. And we actually um, are now starting to explore like new design space Mm -hmm. and new really interesting strategy. And you talked about it perfectly, Justin. We have four dice and we have the red, the white, the black, the black and the yellow dice. And Mm -hmm. they're all used for specific styles of unit and and Mm -hmm. gameplay. And what we're doing, I'm going to, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to skip forward a minute. (laughs) We're looking at this. I'm going to, I'm going to skip right forward. These are some of my favorite units in the game. Mm -hmm. And they're, they may not, they kind of could go by uh, unnoticed because they come with something that we've not really seen seen very much before in Joan of Arc and that is both a ranged and melee attack mm-hmm. um, two abilities on a basic foot, foot unit dodge and haste and when they perform melee attacks from a forest area their pushes become double pushes the forest mm-hmm. striders for me are one of the most kind of um, they feel exactly how they should. The knights feel how they should. The forest riders feel how they should. We've got multiple different sculpts for them as well so you can mix and ma- match them on the bases to kind of customize whatever you want to play and we are starting to explore now more of these special rules that make the units really iconic. So the Pavis shields are going to give you this way of making sure you get that push. They're going to give you the rules we've seen before with the likes of uh, retaliation against cavalry, because that's, again, what they should really have. Mm. And we're simplifying rules like support, right? Mm-hmm. So support used to be um, you would gain dice, extra dice on defense whenever you had three units of the same name together. So I need to have three pikemen with Pavis mm-hmm. in the same area to actually, the shields to actually get support. Now we're just simplifying it. We say, look, if you've got three units with support, there it doesn't matter if they're all the same type mm. or not you will just get it we're taking some of those rules that we really enjoyed and, and had good results and streamlining them mm. and then also heading into some more like exciting gameplay which for me is a more of a, like a battle mode player and an mm-hmm. army builder super you know super excites me and um, yeah so we've got all sorts so yeah uh as you said we are going to give a lot of new minis in this expansion mm-hmm. uh, but some of them will be specific to the uh, Teutonic Knights or mm-hmm. Lithuanians or mm-hmm. Polish uh, uh, armies. And some will be almost like generic units that can be and fit in any army yep. that you have. So yep. that means uh, it's just not an expansion that explore two new armies. It's also something that reinforce the core box as mm-hmm. well. And that's very important to say, like the yeah. mounted lenses. Well, that's it, could, the yeah. Hob- yeah. um, Hoblars were standard. Yeah, medium cavalry essentially. Uh, yeah. So men at arms or sergeant at arms mm-hmm. um, across Europe, and so it's, it's going through some yeah. of the different ones here. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't matter whether you go to England, Spain, uh, Germany, Poland that you you would have seen these types of um, troops across yeah. across the board. Mm-hmm. So obviously we talked a little bit about the Polish, the Lithuanian, some of these more um, flexible troops, but then. As Leo has alluded to, oh yeah, we haven't talked about the Tartars at all. No. Yeah. Um, so uh, yes, again, this and this is something that um, we how I wouldn't say we we kind of held back from, but you know mm-hmm. we, we we could only do so much, right? Yeah. And and getting to now look at the likes because we did the Ottomans before, and um, we also looked at Vlad Tepes as you mentioned mm-hmm. to alluded to before uh, Jerry. But now we're going into a region where we kind of maybe held back a little bit in the first campaign. Now we've kind of going to the east of of Europe. We can kind of delve into some of the more kind of I mean exotic nations almost I would say, and uh, who use very different tactics than just the English or the French yeah. tended to use in the period. So it's giving us a really different way to present troops and. and that, that play differently and um, I yeah, I'm in love with the yeah. sculpts and these guys mm-hmm. do they make um, tartar steak oh, they do have tartar sauce oh, so that, that's where it comes from so the, the tartar people apparently would take their rations their steak whatever put it under their saddles so it rubbed between <gasps> as they rode and it would cook no and that what? is where it comes from no way yep friction cooked saddle cooked tartar that's steak. so that's steak tartar that is what steak tartar was originally supposed to Jerry, that's where it happy. came from 
I can't. I, did, I, I, I did not know that. I, I, I kind of, I'm okay. sensing a hand crank in here no. somewhere. No, I'm going to give him a wind no, up. That, that's it. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So because they, they were, you know, nomadic cavalry and they were almost impossible to get. And if you have to stop to eat, then somebody's going to catch you and kill you to death. Whereas it's much easier to travel, cook your food on the move. So hang on. Mid... I mean, gallop, Good. you have to reach down underneath no, you your to, saddle. You don't have to reach down mid-gallop. You can <laughs> stop the horse and take it out, but it, it's cooked in the same way. You know, you can cook tuna with lemon juice. Okay. You can cook your steak through friction. It tenderizes. I know what we're doing tonight. Luke. Horse sweat. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's, you know, this, uh, this, this thing was really... Uh, uh, a th- Something that they used. Did the tonics use these to, uh, after the, the, the? I was supposed to say Gettysburg. <laughs> <laughs> not Wrong wasn't period. wasn't Gettysburg. No, not so much. No. no. Um, once they fled, they yes. fled to a nearby town and made an encirclement of the war wagons to yeah. try as, as a last. It didn't yes. work. It's called uh, wagon laggers. Yes. Yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, uh, and this is something super fun for us because this is something again very different to what yes, we had in yes. the first game. It will mm-hmm. it will give an, 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 some new tactics, some new yeah. gameplay, some new feeling. Mm-hmm. I, I have a question with, with the uh, Teutonic Knights. From mm-hmm. what I heard, uh, but I'm not sure. You you, you tell me. Uh, the Teutonic Knights were very, you know, the Pope's voice, and mm-hmm. they were like like this. But they had problems because they were not supposed to attack any non. Uh, well, to, to attack the, uh, the, Catholic, Catholic, yeah. the Catholic countries, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. didn't they have problems with uh, by attacking the, the Polish? Yes. When the crusade was called, I don't think the Poles were Catholic at that stage. Oh. Hmm. Um, but at one point, the Polish I, when the Polish Lithuanian Empire was formed against them, there had been. Um, into royal houses being married and one of them had to convert to Catholicism because the initial papal bill was ordered not just against the pagans but Eastern Orthodox Christians who are run from Rome and therefore they count. Um, So yeah, so at at some point there was a a royal house change from being Eastern Orthodox Christian to being Catholic. But unfortunately it meant they came down on the wrong side of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Mm -hmm. they did run into friction then um, post that. So yeah. Yeah. So some of these orders uh, had problems yeah. later on, right? Yeah, the Teutonic well, knights are the, part of them. Yeah, yeah, the Teutonic certainly had it. Well, most of, a lot of the orders I talked about earlier had problems as well at okay. various points, just because what they said and what they wanted to do rubbed against either the nation they happened to be in, or invading, or eventually the Pope themselves. So mm-hmm. when the popes changed, so yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, it was never. Cool. It was never always a straight, narrow path for them. <laughs> Which is the the vision we have for the game. Mm. You know, there's no yeah. right or wrong. No. You could you could always see uh, it from from one perspective. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's Absolutely. what we ex- exactly try to do with the scenarios. So you could play, and in, in the game also here, you can play on the Pagan's uh, way as well. Yeah, you got and, it. Uh, do you know what? Let's bring them oh, in. Hello. <laughs> I love the pagan miniatures. It, it, They're it, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. It wouldn't be a Time of Legends game if we didn't embrace mm. some of the, the myths of the time and look mm. at some of the things that really... Uh, so this, so this, this this was a brand... So obviously previously we, we were very much focused um, on the holy and unholy and the Christian belief system. Now being able to look at pagans, we were able to get into more kind of um, almost dryadic you know, mm-hmm. kind of beliefs. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're looking at the likes of interesting these, these groves and these rituals and these deep dark forests and having these scenarios that are taking place um, in terrain that will fight against you. You guys mm-hmm. got to play with us mm. a, a little bit. Oh yeah, we, we we did the the very first game we we shot with you guys this week. I actually saw the the Teutonic Knights trying to cleanse a filthy evil <laughs> pagan heathen. We, we were having. Guess what side Jerry was on? We we were having a picnic. It was a beautiful day, and then these oh, guys in armor turned up. I'm pretty sure you were sacrificing people, devils, only because they were there. Devils, which, you know. For the greater good, like, you for know, the there, there, the there's there's these great hulking big fellas rolling in in heavy armor. We panicked. We, we decided bringing, we needed to call on a god. We were bringing you religion, and there's only one god, and it's still not Twiglet Boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, hang on, that, that's not a god. Yeah. That's the god. That's the oh. god, right? <laughs> Pocahontas. Hercunius. <laughs> yeah, that's who you say. <laughs> uh, beautiful sculpt, though, really nicely capturing uh, this image of of a god. 
I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's funny because before um, before mm -hmm. we started talking about this expansion and really kind of working on it, like, I I, I mean, you know uh, mm. Thor, you know Odin, you, you know Zeus, but I actually knew nothing about Bakunia. So I, it was fun doing the, the research into him and, and, and looking at it mm. and just seeing it's he was the god of many, many, many things. He was the god of like 12 different things, but thunder and war kind of was the main. Mm. Oh, it's like good. Her. It's good to uh, be able to branch out like diversify, that. right? Diversify <laughs> your uh, godly portfolio. Could you tell <laughs> us a little bit of what uh, uh, the sacred tree and Percunius can do? Um, they they actually have some really interesting abilities within the game. So the the sacred tree has to be my favorite of the pair of them, because so long as he's in a forest, he can essentially call on the powers of the forest to have another area with a tree attack as if it was him mm -hmm. however it does destroy the tree in the process which was very very interesting mechanically because i was watching how jerry was moving and i could see that he was actually scared to come close to the forest in some instances or he was gripping up to make sure he mm -hmm. had a good defensive ball essentially in the areas I wasn't really paying attention to the trees really <laughs> trees don't move that's the sort of crazy thing pagans would think of <laughs> occasionally i will grant you occasionally bushes will burn and talk to you <laughs> <laughs> but not in about 3,000, 4,000. So, so were, were you looking for advice when you started burning down my forest? I, no, I, I, I kind of need to know. This is need to know information. Just trying to coax, coax an answer. <laughs> From what? What was the question? The question is how many of these pagans do we have to burn before they accept Christ as their savior? <laughs> You need to watch that Let's Play uh, to get the full context. Because yeah, that, really that, that it was it's more or less it, it was, it was, it was more or less uh, an entire game of, of that. Yeah, that that's just entertainment value. Whenever you have Jerry versus me on camera, it's fabulous. <laughs> that's um, uh, Percunius, on the other hand, is actually really cool as well because he can actually start striking down with the lightning bolts. Yeah. However, we're in a forest, and I don't want my forest to burn as part of the scenario. Yeah. So there's a bit of a risk reward on that one. Yes. <laughs> And, and it's fun because whenever we were looking at the gameplay for him, we gave him this ability to potentially uh, penetrate uh, the L defense. So it doesn't mm. matter if you're in full metal, his lightning's going to just conduct yeah. through that. No and defense against lightning. L lightning plus metal equals right. good time for Percunius. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, so because yeah. in that scenario, you didn't necessarily have to summon him. Mm -hmm. You know, you choose to sacrifice those people. I, uh, I, did. <laughs> I, I did because because let, let's be honest, the the Templars were going to you know make sure I couldn't sacrifice oh. them. That, Teutonics. Oh, sorry, Teutonics. <laughs> Get well, the order right. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Well, the Teutonics were going to kill those Teutonics. civilians, so they should be worth something before they go instead of just being wasted. I love this so much. It's just created an epic story. Like the couple of games you guys have played this week, uh, from Sieges to, to Joan of Arc herself, to, to the, mm -hmm. the Grove and to the Gods. Like it's just, you guys have done the really dragon well. also. Oh yeah, that was Wait fun. Wait until you see Joan. I'm not saying <laughs> I, I was blessed from on high, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, let it be the dice gods. No, no, just save it for the let them watch the last one. It was so good. <laughs> so we've got a little bit more about the pagans yes. here. Yeah, so we saw a first god uh, that is called Percunius, and this is a goddess uh, called Lema. She's uh, she's the goddess of luck and uh, fate. You know, so she can she can give you good fate, and of course, we are in a pagan uh, forest, and yeah, she can ride this gigantic bear, and yeah, I, I really love the art. I don't know what you think, uh, and yes, the mini is is very impressive as well. We're very, even though yeah. if she's yeah, she's she's human sized. Mm. We're very blessed with all the artists we we get to work with, but I think it's it's a real opportunity to go and look at these things that um, really haven't had, I guess, what you might call kind of modern art mm -hmm. done of. You know, mm -hmm. we're we're almost kind of redefining and looking at some of these these things that haven't been drawn for hundreds of years. Um, and it's really nice to look at something and see it, it, it could be sort of a fantasy novel, but actually, no, it's got real roots mm. in, in our history. Very much like this gentleman. Wow. Oh, yes. Nicholas, <laughs> old Nicholas Cage here. No, Wicco. No. No. <laughs> I want to see if I can. I want to see if I can rise out, Jerry. There was only one Wicker man, and he was not in that. I was. I was saying. I, I knew I could get Jerry there with that one. <laughs> see, I, I don't know. I'm getting kind of festival vibes off this guy. Oh my word! <laughs> the old burning man here from, yeah. from Justin. Oh, yeah. Not not surprised at all by that one. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about this one, Leo? Well, you know they can summon different uh, creatures, and they are myth uh, from that area and that period mm -hmm. and the wicker man is one of them mm -hmm. uh so yeah he usually is from the uh well you can see how how do you call this um, a mill right yeah. yeah 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 so he 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 comes from the peasant uh uh and he's also made of 
would you say straw or yeah, it, yeah it's it was constructed from well wicker yes yeah. so yeah. wicker yeah mm. wooden straw and bundles and yeah yeah exactly and yeah that that is from that time and so we we try to reflect uh the, the pagan myth and the pagan beliefs uh so you can always explore different things and mm -hmm. of course he he's on the side of the it, and this and this is where we get to take a little bit of creative liberty, right? Yeah. You know, we get to get something that was kind of meant to be as an inanimate object that they were mm -hmm. using for their sacrifices yeah. or their, their good times. Um, and we were able to say, no, what happens actually if that was fully animated? What happens if the myths and beliefs of that time actually were completely mm -hmm. real and we can make it a real thing? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, again, it gives us a bit of creative freedom. Yeah. And Although yes, I, yeah. Yeah, I love the way the sculpt is done, that he's actually holding someone. Yep. Yeah. Just gives you an idea of the scale, right? Per sod. That's Sir Edward Woodward. <laughs> in his hand right there right no did, joke did he do something bad he was the original poor guy in the original wicker man film he okay. was the guy who got burnt to death at the end of it he was the cop on the island okay so Played what, Nicholas what, what we'll have <laughs> no. we, we'll have <laughs> some scenarios that are historical in this yeah. expansion and yep. some scenarios that will be more myth based mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, yes like and Very pagan cool. oriented. Yeah. So I, w I want to take a minute because it's, it's important for us because we, we, we get excited. We love new stuff. We love new minis. We love, you know, the mm -hmm. tonic order is going to be great fun and it's going to be a, it's going to be a big box expansion. Um, but it's important for us to kind of remember this is also uh, our, our kind of second time with Time of Legends mm -hmm. of Arc. So there's a couple of things I kind of want to touch upon because we're only a few days away from the Kickstarter. Yeah, now. yeah. Um, so our returning backers are still like a really big kind of key, key part of that. Um, so we, we will have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this update pack. So if returning backers are coming back, there's information on our website site where they can kind of find out about that because we are looking at kind of supporting them with any errata we do if we errata cards and we make mm -hmm. changes and we, we do the book and all that stuff we're going to look at supplying that um, and making that both available digitally and, and obviously mm -hmm. sent as well the other thing though is that we are going to be going further afield from this we are going to actually not just look at the Sonic Order, not just the Baltic region and Eastern Europe, but as I mentioned right back at the start, we're going to have some stretch goals as well. Mm -hmm. We have some plans for some stories. Uh, Which is unusual, you know, when, when you do... You what stories, you would no. Call, uh, a reprint, or you when you put something that is back, yeah. Usually, because mm. people will get the first. It's just a goals. second edition or a second yeah. printing. Yeah, usually, yeah. You, yeah. usually you have yeah. no stretch yeah. goals, right? Yeah. 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 But we don't want to do things like people usually do. <laughs> so I, I don't want to give too much away. Oh, um, come on, tease us. I, I, yeah, well, I, yeah, us. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Um, I, 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 we have some big plans and people will have to kind of stay tuned. And what, what we're going to be doing is saying, you know, you for the Teutonic Knights expansion, you're still going to need the core game. So you're yeah. the core box and the military box is essentially your core game. All the stretch goals mm -hmm. that were in the first campaign will all be in that straight away. We're yeah. not we're not going back over anything. Everything will be there from, from day one. If you get the core box, then you've obviously got all the range of different expansions, mm -hmm. plus obviously the, the Tonic Order expansion, uh, which will be in there as well. But that Teutonic Order expansion is going to be added to. Mm. We're going to detect the Teutonic Order expansion and say, do you know what? Maybe, I don't want to give too much away here because mm. we have some big plans, <laughs> but maybe like half of that, maybe two thirds of that will be Teutonic Order. But then we're going to go and we're going to add some more stuff in and we're going to do stuff that's both for new backers and people who are just welcoming and, and enjoying Time of Legends and the first time mm -hmm. and some stuff for people who were there the first time and maybe had some requests and ideas for things they wanted to do. So I love these mics, by the way. I really, really? do. <laughs> I really, I really enjoy them. They are nice. I really enjoy them. Uh, so this. Hello. Oh. oh. Who's this, Leo? I'll, mur I'll murder the pronunciation if I try it. This is Bertrand du Guesclin, the most famous French knight from the early Hundred Years' War. Uh, yeah, so he, yes, he, we only had a foot version of uh, mm -hmm. Bertrand du Guesclin, and now we will, we might, well, well at least if we you hit the goal. We, we, we hit, believe in our yes, backers. If, we really yeah, believe. If we hit the stretch goal, we will have a mounted versions and may, um, version and maybe some other little surprises coming Ooh. with them, but... We, um, as I mentioned earlier, we did a survey um, mm -hmm. with all of our backers and you know, we had over um, 2,800 people um, came back to us, which was great mm -hmm. and gave us insight. And, and there's a lot of people interested in our battle mode. We recently did a, a huge update to our battle mode where we've got 12 different army lists now where you mm -hmm. can combine army lists together to play. So we're looking at adding new tactical scenarios, adding new mythical scenarios, but also looking to support um, the battle mode as well. So mm -hmm. if you want to play mounted or, 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 or on foot characters, mm -hmm. you can, and they will have their own cards and their own ways of play. Previously, what we kind of always did was we released something with a scenario attached to it mm -hmm. so you kind of that was just for this but we're trying to kind of say no we, we want to support the game on whole 
en yeah. masse so you can mix and match however you want you play with what suits you mm -hmm. and we're going to look to add some of that content in to suit people as well mm -hmm. that being said we've talked a lot about the pagans we've talked a lot about the again eastern europe but we're not ignoring uh, the, the, the the christian holy and unholy mm -hmm. aspect of what, what that we really explored mm -hmm. um, in, in the first game so we will have the likes of glorious angels Ooh. bringing their radiant light to the battlefield we are looking at bolstering some of those forces further and giving you more yes. into i mean because before uh, i mean i can bring them in here jerry uh, yeah. we you know we had angels we had archangels since saint michael if you did delve into some of the other boxes you know we had i'm going to murder this against raphael or rafael raphael, raphael. raphael. yes um these are yeah um, these are all plastic painted minis so you can see the details yes mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, the, we, we had some angels. Um, you have to know that there they are only, at that time, three archangels mm -hmm. that are recognized mm -hmm. by that time, and yep. we've already provided them. Yep. So for the people who are asking, is this a new archangel? No, it's mm -hmm. not a new archangel. The only three archangels are... Uh, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. 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 Yes, yeah. these are the, th the only three. Otherwise, uh, if you said Uriel, for instance, you could be uh, excommunicated at that yeah. time. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Just yeah, an angel. Yeah. God is my strength. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where is Castiel? <laughs> oh. Just, just, uh, that, that's an interesting thing. Because you could potentially go full angelic war because there's levels of angel. Uh -huh. So you've archangel, powers, principalities, seats, dominions, seraphim, cherubim. Yeah. And one other I can't remember. There's seven, there's seven levels of angel and you've got the archangels already. So you could, you could rank them by strength. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we could, we could bring the smallest one, like the, the cherubim. I think cherubim. Uh, we, already, we already have but, judgment. Yeah. He's a, he's accompanied by uh, cherubim. But the, the glorious angel is yeah. because uh, in the uh, Revelation book, uh, you have a lot of angels that mm. are uh, described with an adjective. You know, yes. like, and this is a way to pr to provide some new ones. And this one will be more of a supporting angel. So we've had like very powerful, mm. uh, combative uh, kind of. Uh, mm. Yes, offensive. Or, well, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, Angels, this one will be a little different. It will uh, introduce a new gameplay. And as you said with Bertrand du Guesclin, uh, these will offer also some new options in the battle mode. Mm -hmm. You know, you will, you will have, when you build your army, you will have more choices. Uh, uh, for instance, when you build an army with Bertrand du Guesclin, you could choose now, uh, well, if we unlock the stretch goal, mm -hmm. of course, yes. mm -hmm. uh, his foot, foot version or mountain well, version. Yeah. And if you want to build a, an angelic uh, army, you could now maybe if we if we get her, uh, choose another one. You That's see? it. Mm. Yeah. So it's the second time we're now. Mm -hmm. So first of October, we will launch. Uh, the campaign is not going to be too long. We're looking at a couple of weeks. So we're looking at about a, a two week long campaign. Mm -hmm. um, but we do hope to do lots of lives, lots of content. We're going to have lots of games uh, shared so people can watch. Whether you're whether you're into the, the the mythical or the tactical or the battle, whatever you're into, we're going to have lots of different content shared. Mm -hmm. We will be talking a lot more about what's in the expansion and everything to come. And I very, I'm hopeful, I'm very, very hopeful that we will smash a, a whole bunch more stretch goals, we'll add a, a lot more to the box and turn the Teutonic expansion into more than just that, into, mm -hmm. into a much more bigger things so if mm -hmm. you're if you're into it you can enjoy it um yeah it's it's an exciting time oh yes Very cool. i can't wait <laughs> right so is that everything i mean I could, I, go, uh, I could go out there and get all of this. Your, your, wave, your wave two arrived not that long ago. We could go out there and get it all in here. Yeah, yeah, it did. And I am so happy with everything that came in it just for the games we've had. We had a proper giggle at the guys coming in looking at the four horsemen, which we, we actually have over at the front of the table. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the death mini with the upside down horse with the every mouth time and neck I see stalks it, everybody. Every time I see it, it's just like, what? what? What's happening? It's What's incredible. going on? Why is this? War is still my favorite. I don't mm. know why. It's just something about the way he's standing, kind of pouched, ready to battle on the horse <laughs> yeah. in this really weird stance, and the whole thing's on fire. It's just, it's just wonderful. Yeah. Um, yes, it's very difficult for us to sit here and kind of show you the entire range because it really is. It's forty kilograms of game. Yep. It is. It's, you know, <laughs> we have a lot of people in our community who are just wonderful. Who you, you can play Joan of Arc um, as a board game and just lift it out. You can pick the core box and a couple of expansions that suit you. But we have a lot of people that have adopted it, you know, as a as a full hobby, as a game mm -hmm. to. 
tech and embrace as as a as a massive thing because you can create and do so much with it. Uh, we have. I'm going to do a shout out actually, just in case you're watching this. Um, ben, uh, Ben bought. Um, ben essentially recreated uh, the siege of Paris. Oh, right. um, With 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 taking siege, taking the village, taking legendary battles, merging all these. A uh, map from that time. Uh, take, yeah, he got a, he got a map of that from like from the from the time period and and, and basically just went. I am making this on a, like a six by four table. He had a big game topper, and like our entire uh, Facebook group are like enamored with it. Everyone's every day like, "Well, give us updates on it." Um, and there's so many people that have really just dove in and and seen that the system is is so uh, flexible mm-hmm. that you can do so much with it. Um, and we know we, we've got a lot of improvements to do. You know that we, we we know ourselves there are things we want to make better, and that's that's as I said a, a big mm-hmm. part of this campaign. So it's been really rewarding for us to listen to Board Game Geek, listen, be on our Discord Mythic Games mm-hmm. Discord, Discord channel, be on Facebook and hear what people are saying uh, and react to that and, and mm-hmm. fix things that are causing issues and then expand as well and simplify yeah. where we can very this, cool yeah yeah we you know we are in for a long term on this yeah. game mm-hmm. it's uh it's really our most popular game it's our biggest game it's uh yeah it's something that is very important to us and that will be in the future yeah. as well mm-hmm. uh, we we have so many many things to do and it was a great opportunity for us to do this reprint why are we doing it we, we so many people ask for it. Uh, we, they, they loved it. Uh, they want some people missed it. Some people said, "Oh, I couldn't get everything." So now it's the opportunity to do it. Uh, we, we had to do it, and instead of simply reprinting with nothing, of course, we're going to uh, improve everything we can. So that means, yes, the the, the new rules uh, are very close to the the first one, but they they. Yeah, they just tightened up. Yeah. You guys are going to be at uh, Essen Spiel. We will. We will. De- mm. We will be there. We will be demoing at the end of October. And, so, and that will be one point five rules. Then. Yes, it will yeah. indeed. Yeah, you'll so. be able to come along and do that. Will be the campaign will have finished, but the pledge manager will be close to kind of opening at that point, so you can absolutely yeah. come along. Um, I think. It, it, it's it, plenty. The proof is in the pudding with Joan of Arc mm. a lot, and it's fun whenever we go to shows. And it's a real struggle to decide what to play. Yeah. Um, at Gen Con this year, um, I, I just said, you know what? I'm going to make my own little mini <laughs> scenario here, and I just made an, an unholy army led by um, led by uh, the devil and a holy army with Archangel Michael, and um, basically trying to defend what I called the last unicorn. And the goal was for people to come and try and slay the unicorn or protect it for a number of rounds. And I just invented that on a whim and made a couple of rules, and everybody. That played it just loved it and it was it was really and i had people messaging me on facebook saying when are you going to release that unicorn scenario and i was like that was just me for five minutes before well, like just, the saturday morning at Gen Con. It. Um, and, and it's, a, it's a real delight to see people get inspired and and, mm-hmm. and the wealth of stuff in there yeah well guys it's always always a pleasure to have you guys here in the studio to talk about joan of arc or any of the games that the mythic games crew actually create because you have such a passion for it and such a level of creativity and even just right down to the the mechanical precision with which you create your games it's just great to see thank you thank so uh, i think if that's everything we will move on here uh thank you once again everybody we'll be back soon i think they'll be ideal for tiny saga tiny saga <laughs> i do think while they're going back because they're tightening up the rules mm. and if you back the original kickstarter you're still getting uh, a pdf of the new rules so yeah where they've listened to feedback yeah they do really need to take feedback on board for the musicians still yeah they are broken so, like, so broken well if you both have one no they're broken. <laughs> Doesn't matter who's got them. Uh, they, they are broken. Uh, uh, Lloyd, you won't know this, but uh, so the musician in Joan of Arc, yeah. you keep him in the same zone as your mate, and if anyone's fighting in there, every single unit in there gets a, a sing, a, like an extra dice to fight with. Ooh. It and is an extra ridiculous. Dice to yeah, ridiculously yeah. powerful. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, I'm excited for it because I'm I'm liking seeing the the new units that they're bringing out there. The the knightly orders are going to be very fun to play. Oh yeah, get the Teutonics in there. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. every time I see it, like I did see the, the miniatures and stuff that were up close, and I was like, oh, these are so so super sharp. Yeah, so weird. cool, and the buildings and stuff they've got going with it. Yeah, even the trees is cool, and the way they've modulated, he painted it and stuff. It's all really well shaded and stuff. Yeah, the stuff see, that I was looking at. Oh my. I'll never be able to paint it like that. But the more that's themselves, because like you keep you keep teasing me with your fifteen mil yeah. wee jobbies. Yes. And I look at your fifteen mil wee jobbies and I think, oh, I'd like a bit of that. Yeah. But then I go off and I start looking at them and there's all these really low res pictures and stuff. I think a bit of Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc would be a good show. Oh. Now, <laughs> while we had the guys over myself and Jerry got to film a ton of battles and stuff with them. So there's yeah. one of the scenarios that I'm really looking forward to letting everyone see, which is called Old God Rising. 
So it's got some fantasy stuff in there with Jerry taking on the role of the knightly orders mm. and me taking on some some very innocent pagans who are oh, trying yeah. to summon the god. <laughs> See right there, those two words, pagan <laughs> summon. Right. Innocent? You're not having a problem with innocent? Yeah, because clearly the other two override that one. <laughs> about you. But yeah, uh, but that was one of the new yeah. scenarios using the Teutonics. Yeah, um, lots of fun to so be yeah, had with so it. Multi crusades. It's okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. What's the best way to get your hands on? Uh, join them on the Kickstarter when it launches. Do we know when it's going to launch? Uh, no. Nope. Soon? No. Nope. Uh, it, it is soon. <laughs> it is very soon, which is why we're we're putting the... the, it's the start, of we're gonna tease start of everybody. October. It's, start of October. Start of October 1st to October 14th. It's a two-week campaign. Yeah, so it's a short one. Because like, we're teasing them all. Like, going, oh. like, well, when can I get my hands on? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's, Totally worth it just for soon, soonish. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> hope somebody in your street has backed it and see yeah. if you can spot the postman before they do and just go, yeah, that's my what, mission. Be tackle them. Yeah, yeah, just do that. That's how you get your hands on it. Don't bother back to Kickstarter. Just, just wait. Now, wait and hope the boxes pass you in the street. Yeah. But oh, it's, it's definitely worth getting. And I mean, like, we have one and we have two for the initial. Joan of Arc has landed with pretty much everybody, I believe, now. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're waiting, you're one of the last few. Cool. Right. Before we round out the show, mm -hmm. we had a cool prize from Foreground last week. Yes. We have a winner, I believe, Dustin. Uh, yes. So if you want to find out if you have won the prize, go across to beastofwar.com, check the prize claim center. Uh, as always, you have 30 days to claim your prize after that. I'm sorry, but it comes off the site and you've lost your chance. Oh, dear. You're you're like, whoosh, yes. Whoosh, yes. Get that in there. Yes. Exciting stuff. Yes. Right. <laughs> I'm going to be joining you guys again for mm -hmm. Backstage tomorrow. Yes, Warren should hopefully be back as well. Ben, you won't be with us. You'll be off gaming, I, I no doubt. I, I will be you got, off. You got Solo big gaming. gaming plans this weekend, do you? Solo gaming. Rugby. That's what his gaming oh, plans are. Is it rugby, rugby this weekend? Rugby. Right, when did that become a war game? This weekend. So, yeah, who's, cool. who's playing? Uh, England, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Against? Uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember who we're playing next. But <laughs> it's the World Cup at the moment in Japan. So. But yes, we are, it's the World Cup over in Japan. This is just an excuse to go to the pub. It is an excuse to go to the pub, yes. Yeah, what's and, wrong with and excuse? Eat, <laughs> eat copious bags of crisps while complaining about how bad people are playing. <laughs> I'd love a pint of crisps right now. Uh, <laughs> let's end the show. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's end the show. Um, remember, <laughs> to get, bag of crisps. remember to get your prize came in if you are the winner. Yep. Go and check that out. Yeah. Join us tomorrow. I'll be with Justin, Ben, Warren will be in the show. And if you didn't check out the Points of View show... Jerry... It did point out me, did, did, did I go wrong? <laughs> yeah. Justin, Jerry, not Ben, and Warren will there be you go. here. And if you didn't check out the Points of View show, you should go and check it out. It's like our third big show of the weekend. Like, yeah. It's an entire weekend now. Mm. Yeah, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, with, you have content. With, all, with gorgeous people here. You spend your entire weekend with us. You can, you think I'm you can spend your Friday night with us. <laughs> You can spend your Saturday morning with us. You can spend your Sunday morning with us. Yep. Like that's an extended weekend right there. Oh, really yeah, is, yeah. And then do the walk of shame on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what, is that where you, you delete your internet history, Jerry? It's just where I just toss the wet palette into the bin. <laughs> right, pints and crisps. All right. We'll see you again tomorrow, guys. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. <laughs>